5th edition actual play live stream, where we have four groups of four player characters. Uh, tonight we are going to be returning to the Adventures of the Thorns, a group of eco-terrorists, a secretive group that operates in all parts of Walharn, the continent on which our stories take place, uh, basically protecting the natural order and making sure that uh, economic expansion, imperial expansion, does not damage the uh, natural world. I'm going to have the characters introduce themselves, and then I'll give a, a brief uh, recap of their most recent adventures. Uh, let's go in the order that we have it on the thumbnail. I hope that you are ready for the intro of Soren. Hi, I'm Logan Back. I play Soren Erickson. I'm the youngest of the Ericsons. <coughs> After Soren, we have Sybil. Hi, I'm Emmy. I play Sybil, uh, the middleest child of the Ericsons and the bard cleric. After Sybil, we have Sebastian. Hey, it's me, Sebastian, the oldest Erickson. I'm played by Brian. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, who plays who? Uh, <laughs> and next we have Stevia. Hi, I'm Zach. I play Stevie Carnon. I'm a big old woman. I'd really call us more eco freedom fighters than eco terrorists, but yeah, each no, own. Very fair. Very fair. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I I have a few in a few of the intros. I've tried really hard to find a way of saying like uh, these are the people who are on the right side of things. <laughs> their their actions would be considered by like people in power and then one of you will go we're like eco terrorists yeah. and so yeah. i think it's just it's the easiest way to explain it. True. the operating principles even though... i mean we're terrorists and we're terrorists to capitalism well i mean you know just like uh when someone I know, I can say, just like when my sister almost lost a nanny job for having an IRA bumper sticker, uh, you know, you're not, you're not really a terrorist if you're just fighting a occupying force and you don't have their type of weaponry. Anyway, let's get into. <laughs> I'm not here. Haven't you ever seen Deep Space Nine? I'm not yeah, here we're... to explain the history of Ireland and Northern Ireland, uh, even though I will. Uh, but we uh, basically we come back to the thorns uh, as they have been uh, doing what they do best, uh, making sure that nature is protected. Uh, they have been doing this by they found out that there were a group of uh, predators, migrant predators, these uh, hyenas who were an invasive species. Uh, they were not meant to be an earth <coughs> bear where the thorns have been sent by their uh, commanding officer, Phoebe. And so they entered a cave system called the Tombs of Telamon. Uh, once they entered, they came across a group of bandits, the bandits, and they struck an agreement together that the bandits would pull away the bulk of the hyenas and the party, the thorns, would confront their matron and some of the uh, more dangerous older members of this pack. Uh, after the fight, they found that the hyenas had a prisoner, a small pug. Um, before moving on, uh, Sybil was struck by some inspiration. Uh, the thorns together realized that this pug seemed intelligent, and they cast a spell. Sybil cast uh, the spell magic, and this pug became a tall, handsome high elf named Abail. Uh, not long after Abail was revealed to be an elf and not a small dog bred to be unable to breathe, uh, the bandits returned and uh, attacked. The bargain no longer in play. Uh, the party with Abail's help uh, managed to finish off the bandits and are now in the, at least to their knowledge, uh, empty of threat tomb of Telamon. And that's where we come back into it. So welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons. <coughs> you 
You all are in Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I would have no clue. I would have no clue. Uh, Sybil's gonna like dust herself off and just look to her party and say, uh, do any of you need healing? I could maybe use a touch. I'm not too bad off though. Never. I'm pretty good. Uh, are you okay? About you? Oh, I'm I'm fine. Thank you for thinking of me. Cool. So, do we just want to take all this gold? I see no reason not to. And there is a a tomb. Another room, right? Yes. That's was a pug. How far did you get through here? I I didn't go any further, but I know the hyenas taunted their human prey the night that I was captured. A pair of farmers who lived nearby were their quarry, and they were speaking of getting some tools together and taking what was in the tomb. In this tomb, uh, you, you know anything about the uh, zombie potential of it? How, how likely are we looking at having to fight something in there, you think? Um, could you explain what a zombie is, Shri? Yeah, it's like, um, you know when you eat like a whole animal, but leave some of the, the skin on it and then let it sit for a while? And then if that came back to life? Oh. And it wanted to eat you, and you had to hit it in the head to kill. I've heard of but, um, any of those and everything. I I don't believe that would be a problem. I think that if if the presence of these hyenas and the, and indeed the bandits who became their sort of patrons, uh, if their presence here did not call something, some shambling corpse out from the tomb, I doubt that uh, you all would, or we would. Yeah, all right. I don't know if you guys sense any any sort of magic thing about it, but uh, otherwise, it seems pretty routine, I guess. Now, you were brought in here as a dog. Yes. Because I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I don't know. You had like a, a business partner that turned you into a dog, right? Yes. That kind was... of. Right about 50 years ago. Not a business Would... partner, a business contact. Okay. Who was displeased. And so who brought you in here? The hyenas. They just found a pug and said, we'll take that thing? Yes, I was as confused by it as you are now. Were you just walking like along the countryside, Milo and Otis style? No, I was, like... I was a part. I was. I had been adopted by a child in a caravan. Ah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and that curse is just completely gone now. Uh, I have a <laughs> a faint uh, interest in using my foot to scratch behind this ear, and he taps his right ear. But otherwise, I... I would oh, yeah, will, will you do it? Uh, all right. <laughs> and he <laughs> <laughs> sits down and sort of like pulls on his foot and turns. And <laughs> luckily he is an elf. And so he manages to <laughs> basically rub his toes. That's against hilarious. His... Ooh, I like this guy. Man, I want to try that. I sit down too. It's best to. I find. Fuck. <laughs> oh, you, you'll want to. I rolled a one and got eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do it, but you you kind of like pull a little muscle in your thigh. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Before we collect all the gold in this room, should we head off to the other one? Hi. Sure. 
Well, my yes. my sheet says I'm carrying 497 gold right now. So I think <laughs> the last game I went through the process of figuring out the weight of my stuff and <laughs> filling my body with gold. <laughs> okay, but yes, yeah, Stevie is really strong. Sure. I don't yeah, think I the gold is going to be under threat for a while, considering we killed every living being in the other parts of the cave. Do we kill the bandits, or do we... We j literally just murdered the bandits. Yeah, there's yeah. like... We uh, did murder the bandits. You got like corpse. Corpse. Oh, let's... It's just smoking let's, corpses. <laughs> let's do what Stevia said and take all the meat out of their bodies and then fill them with gold. <laughs> what? Like no. Keto. I no. don't think she ever said that. Like then we gold, use their like skins together ducking. to tie all of them together and pull them like a sled. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a good idea. Stevia, it's you a... feel a chill go through batterer at your side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not that. Not doing that one. I, well, look, I, I have nothing on me save my dagger and my clothes. If you would like anything that you are carrying, uh, I feel that my debt is not completely paid. I could take anything that you have that is of little value from you and, and free up your own I mean, luggage. And I such. I would like a lot of gold, but I would also think that we should give a lot of the gold back to other people and like, yeah. you know, give it to our family. Uh, and with family, she sort of like winks <laughs> to the thorns when she says it. <laughs> so, I mean, you could take some of the gold if you just, I don't know, need it as you a should, person yeah, too. You should like, take you some. Just, you just were unpugged, my dude. Thank you. Yeah. And he goes start, over and he start starts, your life. <laughs> he starts <laughs> scooping gold into his pockets. And there's like <laughs> probably a million pieces here. Look at this giant pile of gold. Yeah, yeah we got yeah. so much gold here. Yeah, restart your entire life. Get as much as you need. Don't you have an elephant? Yeah, I do. We can fill that with gold. I don't know if we can get an elephant out of here, though. That's true. Thought... Can our spirit, can our spirit links carry, carry stuff? Yeah. Besides us. Yeah. They can carry equipment stuff. Okay. Yeah, they. I mean, they function like animals when they're with you. They're just very smart. I think I have the saddest hoofed animal. So. And what's your hooved animal? It's a mountain goat. <laughs> mm, flip. Uh, my, my favorite bands. Yeah, it's John Darnielle from <laughs> the mountain yeah, goat. John Darnielle is your hooked animal. <laughs> I mean, well, let's go check the other room, and then we can scoop gold. Maybe there's a bag of holding in there. I don't know what that is. Um, Oh well, I'll, jingle, jingle, I'll tell jingle, jingle. you what I'll tell you what a bag of holding is. So imagine you if you one? had the ability to make a. Well, I knew someone who made them, um, but imagine that you knew someone who was able to create a, another space, a space beyond time and the rules that govern our lives. Ah, uh, that's sort of what you get when you get a bag of holding. And he <laughs> is walking well, next to you. Sorry, sorry oh, it's about all right. that. It's all right. Mm. No, it's fine. I'm a small man. I'm <laughs> I'm wiry. I will both wire it. <laughs> I like you. I like, I like you too. I feel like you're very likable. I can't imagine anyone not getting along with you. And he... <laughs> I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, that you abandoned your uh, younger siblings? Nothing. Um, and I'm putting you all on this map, but before you come to it... Uh, you come to a massive iron door. And there is a inscription on it that is in a language that I am certain that one of you will speak, even though <laughs> I don't. Yep, okay. It's in Sylvan. Oh, no, it's in, okay? it's in zeros and ones. Uh, <laughs> 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 I will say... What? I, what? I Sebastian basically I do think like if there is any way that I would describe Sebastian like outside of D and D terms like how do you describe his whole deal? He's a hacker. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'm in. <laughs> what is your robot? What is Sebastian? But uh, that character that DJ Qualls played in <laughs> some movie where he's a hacker. Uh, I only remember the trailer. Anyway, what is a thief but a medieval hacker? That's true. Uh, You're talking about the new guy. I don't think he played a hacker in the new guy. <laughs> the new guy uh, is the only like uh, this is DJ Qualls movie I know the name of. <laughs> Hey, let's talk about the new guy for a few hours. <laughs> let's start a new guy podcast. Uh, well, you've got to be a cast member to start a podcast about something. Um, you come to this iron door, <laughs> and in Sylvan, it says, Here rests Telamon. Uh, yeah, his grave is probably like right in here. I mean, that's uh, cool. Do we think it's going to be like trapped or anything? You know, like tricked out? Like, how careful are we going to be going in? Or should I just like straight up open the door? I could. Uh, I mean, I'm I'll investigate. Probably not going to be careful at all. Yeah. How obsessed was Soren with ancient Egyptian tombs uh, as a kid? Uh, like, trap. Well, luck check. Uh, so. Ancient Egyptian isn't necessarily the right area <laughs> to be thinking about. All right, Assyrian, same thing. Uh, Just any kind of old tomb that had like darts. Uh, hey Yugi, hey Yugi boy, tell us about this torment. It's it's more like Assyrian, it's more, same thing. I mean, it's it's more like Greek heavily uh, in love with the Sumerian culture that he had come and sort of semi-conquered with a friend. That's kind of the vibe that maybe this okay. tomb might have. Um, and uh, yeah, so Zoran, I would say make a history check to see <laughs> what you might think could be involved. Okay, uh, but does he get an advantage because he was obsessed with it as a kid? Door. Uh, Soren, were you obsessed with it as a kid? You can make the choice. No, probably not. Soren would be like a bug kid. Yeah, I mean, I do think I think you, would, you would be you could. I would say that it would make more sense for Soren to have read a lot about Sikander, the general uh, Telamon served under. Um, I do not think those things are mutually exclusive, bug kid. <laughs> Sumerian history kid, I think, are probably pretty yeah. pretty broad Venn diagram there. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's candor potatoes. It's all the same thing. <laughs> uh, there is a big old door, Soren. It's a big door. Uh, nothing on these hinges over here. Uh, Simple's just gonna try the door. Okay. Uh, when you place your hand on it, um, are you still wearing the spirit ring? Yes. Okay. Uh, it glows as you place your hand onto... There is just, like, this massive, like, single iron bar, and you have to, like, push it down. Um, and so once you have had have your hand around the bar, uh, it the ring begins to glow, and you all hear what sounds like shum, 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 behind the door. So either I just awaken something bad or something loves me. Does this sound like uh, like bars sliding, like unlocking? Uh, I'm not going to make, make a perception that, but... check. It is bars sliding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can I just keep a general eye on our new friend and the way he's reacting as the door opens and things like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, make a insight check now for just general vibe when the door is opened. And then if you Plus zero. Uh, oh. I don't know. Three. Three. Oh, no, I shouldn't be on an advantage. I'm sorry. Three. Okay. Um, so, Sybil, you've got the weight down. You now feel like there's a little bit of give in this big-ass door. Uh, I assume then it's a like a push door, so Sybil's gonna pull it. <laughs> okay, you pull it, nothing happens. It is a push door. <laughs> <laughs> so Sybil's now gonna push it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you push it, uh, you actually feel it just like sliding back. 
and then it seems to have found a like hole that is perfectly sized to the door and it begins to slide down so that it is in it um, and then you see the top of the door catches because of where the iron bar was and is now the first step in a small stone staircase that goes up wow that's cool I'm so sorry. Did Stevia hit batterer? Oh, uh, possibly. I set beer down and batterer, sorry. Uh, I am going. Is it dark? Uh, it is dark, but when you step in, there will be a light situation. Uh, I was just going to cast light and batter. Okay. And you are uh, able to do so. Uh, looking ahead of you, you can see there is a large sarcophagus for not Goliath size, but like pretty close. Um, there is a armor stand that only has uh, greaves on it. And then the, pers the suit of armor is holding this long... Uh, it's a strange sword. It's like a leaf blade sword. Um, it's basically a, a Greek knife, but longer. Um, but very long. Like, not a short sword, a long sword. Um, there are a few piles of gold and a few gems. Uh, there are two chests. And then there is a statue of a man in, like, his late 20s. Um, I'm gonna let my dogs outside. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> man. Y'all, uh, he's kind of getting cute. into these, uh, it's just this guy still barking. He can't stop barking. <laughs> Y'all get any sort of uh, any cursey vibes? Any bad magic going on in here? I mean, I know you don't know that right now, but just something to consider. <laughs> I'm the only one that doesn't have religion on my side. I'm back. Uh, <laughs> oh. Um. You see a statue of a man in his, like, uh, middle 20s. He looks similar to uh, some people of Hallandor. People from the more, like, eastern province of Hallandor. Um, and he is wearing a helmet. Uh, the helmet has this long sort of... It looks almost like it's sharp enough to be a blade. Jutting out of the back, there is, like just this sheet of steel that fans out. Uh, upon closer inspection, you see that it is not uh, steel, but it's very nice, very well done iron. But it is only iron. Uh, the helmet itself is this cool sort of configuration that is like straight across the brow, and then it goes down and flares inward so that it almost touches the lips, and then it would hang past his chin in these like big strips down to his chest. You can see that above the forehead there is a ruby. Kind of like a lion's mane? Kind of like a lion's mane. Uh oh. Could get a whole oeuvre going here. Um, well, what do y'all think? You guys, you guys think we're just down to start touching stuff? Do you know uh, anything about this guy? Um, Pug? Pugsy? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, for, I forgot your name. It's my fault. No, it's okay. Uh, let me think what this guy's uh, history bonus would be. <laughs> um. Let me do the thing I do to remember people's names. Abiel. 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 Oh, Abiel. Okay, got it. It's in my head now. Okay. Um, so <laughs> he points at the statue and he says, uh, Telemon was the first uh, general recruited by Sikander that was not one of his father's men. So when Sikander died, he was one of the, uh, the ten generals who divided part of the land that they had conquered. And was he a bad person or a good person? Do you know anything about that? Uh, 
It depends on your outlook on Sikander, I suppose. Many think that he, he killed his his general. He killed Sikander? Yes. Jealousy. Uh. Sorry? Do you know any magic? Yes. Can you see if any of this stuff is, I don't know, booby-trapped? Um, I could, I could try. Uh, here. And he walks forward. Uh, I, I don't really do any, I don't have anything that's suited to, uh, uh, magically deciphering whether it's trapped or not, but I can, I can just give it a look. And I, I have, and he wiggles his fingers, and you see that between them, like the spots between them, you see that there is now a red hand, and then he lowers his hand, and there is just this floating, like, almost, it looks like an, a glove of magic, and he says, I could poke things with this. <laughs> yeah, why don't you, uh, just give everything a good... Give it a good hard poke. Let's see. See if anything happens. Okay. <laughs> and he pokes <laughs> this nose. He pokes the corner of this. He pokes the top of this chest, the lock of this chest. And then the, he, like, boops the nose of this, <laughs> this armor holding stand. Point test inconclusive. Um... I kind of want to check out this uh, this guy. This helmet does this uh, seem to be removable? Uh, yes, it looks like it's the only part of that whole deal that is removable. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna pick it up and check it out. Okay, uh, you remove it. You can see that there is a. Uh, actually like attached but so firmly that it would take you a really long time to get rid of it uh the hair that is on this statue's head is carved obsidian um and it's like this really intricately done really cool tangle of like really curly hair and it's attached to the helmet no it's like on the statue head sorry uh, oh, okay. uh, look, yeah, looking at the statue, it is like it's really well made. Um, it is, it is like steel or sorry, it's iron and bronze, um, in different places of the plating. Like the actual helmet part seems to be iron, and then that bladed sort of sheet that goes up on the back seems to be made of iron. The rest of it, like the what you saw as a mane, uh, that's like bronze. Cool. And then it has a, a a pretty big ruby on the forehead. Gotcha. We haven't uh, we haven't learned anything like there's anything special about obsidian, have we? I always get that mixed up in fantasy worlds. No, that's uh, that's that's song of ice and fire. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a lot of stuff. I just couldn't remember if it was this particular thing. Um. Okay. Um. So this is the helmet of a guy who killed his his commander. <laughs> Allegedly. Well, I guess it's not using it. I'm gonna inspect the ruby. I guess. Yeah, it's uh. See if, it's I, see if there's anything. You could have it taken out probably by almost any blacksmith. Um, when you hold it in. Oh, there is a light in the room. I apologize. There is a hole in the ceiling that is about as wide as like Sybil's hand uh, and it shines down right here uh, and that on top of Batterer uh, the ruby seems to catch the light in an odd way okay um, I guess I'll just take it for now, unless anyone else wants to check it out, see if be more suited to it. Um, but I don't, I don't want to put it on just yet. I want to see if anyone can tell me any more about this ruby before I put it on. 
Uh, Sybil would like to open the chest that she is uh, standing in front of. Okay. Um, there is a lock, but you can see that it is not bound, uh, so it is... You can open it. <laughs> would you like yeah. to? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you open it, you see inside uh, there is a uh, belt. It is thin leather, a clasp that attaches at the center. Looks like it is bronze. Uh, it's just brown leather. Just a regular belt. Yeah, and then like underneath it, you see there's like a really. Uh, this is non-magical, but there's like this really dope, like cream-colored cloak. <laughs> uh, Sybil's just gonna pull them out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anybody want these? She's gonna show them to her party. Yeah, they look, look a little small for me. I I could uh, take whichever. I'll take anything that you all don't want. No use letting it go to waste. Is Sybil's gonna throw it at him as she passes by to go over to the other chest? What do you throw at him? I throw the cloak of the belt at him. Okay. All right, and you open the other chest. Um, inside, you see that there there is something that you don't really want to see. Uh, there is a old rotting hand. Uh, it is in like uh, this really grungy looking water and the hand is curled with like a death grip around this wand that looks like it is made out of bone. Uh, Sybil is going to shriek and step back from that <laughs> uh, chest. Is everything okay? There's a hand in there. Yeah, we are in a tomb. A ham? No, a hand. Is it human? <laughs> Humanoid. Let me go look at it. Okay. Um. Can I do a deception check now? Um. Arcana, I guess. Uh, on the hand. Yeah, to kind of get a general idea of what it is. Okay. I can do a sleight of hand. Um. <laughs> Um, no, you can do an arcana check, sure. You have to insult it. <laughs> that was a good one, Zach. Um, <laughs> you open it, and you can see that what you have is... Uh, so, the wand itself is clearly magical. It is not, like, a focus. It is a wand that has at least a spell in it. Okay. Um, it seems like in casting the spell a certain way, or maybe by a curse or something, the hand that is attached to it was unable to let go. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to try to cast Mage Hand at the hand. It probably won't do anything, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. Uh, so you cast Mage Hand, and what? what do you do on the hand? So I'm trying to, like, direct the magical energy at the hand that is wrapped around the wand, but I'm sure... I'm not smart, um, so it probably won't do anything. <laughs> I'm new to the spell game, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Can you just rephrase what you're doing? Um, I'm tr- no, 
I can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to cast the spell mage hand like into that hand. Okay, um, gotcha. See if, if yeah. that magic like affects it in any way. Um, I don't think you can. I don't think it's like a ghost hand. Your mage. Yeah. Hand, well. So. I mean, I have a. It's a spectral hand, but it's invis- yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it, it's able to touch stuff. So no, I think. But like, your hand goes and like lays flat against the hand, <laughs> like thing from the Adams family being tired. Okay. Yeah, I, my hand spoons its hand. Yeah, um, basically. Can I lift it with the mage hand? Oh uh, yeah, you can. I'm gonna lift it, but I'm gonna hold it out like it's like a bag of garbage that I don't want to like be near my nose so i'm just like holding it out okay you said the wand the wand is made of bone uh oh, the wand is made out of bone yeah the handle is made out of something else the, the like wand part is made out of bone it's the handle is cherry wood i'm gonna let my dogs inside okay it's uh pretty creepy it's very creepy, but cool. Any idea what it does? Getting into a My Chemical Romance phase, so I like bony things. <laughs> it does kind of match your one eye. Hell yeah. Is it a wand of summoning a black parade? <laughs> when I was a young boy. Uh... <laughs> What did you do with the wand? Did um, so I'm pulling it out of the uh, out of the chest, and I'm gonna lay it down right here. And does anything happen? No. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna check the chest. Is there any like hidden compartments or anything like that? Uh, make an investigation check. Sixteen. Uh, there is a hidden compartment in the upper part of the chest. Looking at the chest that Sybil opened earlier, you can see there is more, like, empty space in the top compared to the one that you that she opened more recently. Um, and you are able to find a small piece that you can push. And when it opens, you see. Mm, I'm hesitant to give this to you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I know that you're going to say that it's something that doesn't exist. There's a satchel. There's a gray satchel. I check for messages. You son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, there you have a a bag that can be thrown across the shoulder. Uh, Could fit a laptop in it, a couple files for your boss. Just kidding. It's a satchel. Okay. Well, I'm going to go get on my 18 uh, speed bike and I'm going to go do my job now. Are you going um, to ride, like, ride like hell? <laughs> premium rush? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a premium rush, baby. Um, <laughs> I thought they all rode fixies. It's like drifted downhill. I close a cab door. <laughs> I close another cab door. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, does this uh, seem magical? What the belt? The bag. Oh, the bag. Uh, the bag. I mean, make an investigation check. Okay. Twenty-two. Uh, most definitely, it's empty. Like if I reach into it, it's empty. Yeah, it's empty. It's empty when you look at it. And did Abiel really tell me what a bag of holding is? Yeah, he did. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take something and put it in there. Okay. Something heavy. I'm gonna put a crowbar in there. Okay, you put your crowbar in there. Uh, looking at it, your crowbar is sitting there, and then uh, there's like the skittering of a rock under Stevia's foot. And your eyes just dart away for a second, thinking like, ah, it's the bandits. They're coming at us. But then there's nothing. And when you look back into the bag, the crowbar is gone. What? Did you just lose your crowbar? I'm going to reach into the bag and see if I can find my crowbar. 
Ah, oh, your hands wrap around the metal of your crowbar. Oh, I'm going to go put all this gold in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, each of the piles in here, there are 35 gold pieces. So that's 70 total. Mm -hmm. And you said there are gems too? Uh, there are gems. You managed to find none of the gems are worth more than uh, 100 gold. You find one diamond and one sapphire that are worth 100 gold. And then the rest of your gems are just basically the equivalent of gold. Uh, okay. And they make up the equivalent of like another 30 gold. Got it. Okay. We gonna crack open this uh, tomb itself, or are we gonna leave that no. uh, leave that to the to the gods? Um, what's the deal with the with the suit of with the armor holder? Uh, so it's just yeah. there are two. Uh, bronze greaves lined with leather, and then there is a long sword that he is holding. Okay. Yeah. Can I just take those off of it? Yeah. So the the greaves there are fasteners on the back, but you can undo them. Uh, and the long sword it takes a little bit of prying, but you can get it out of the, the statued hands without breaking them. Okay. Um, the longsword is pretty interesting. Um, it is a bronze blade that has a, a uh, bulbous part in sort of the middle, like a Zephos. Uh, it's narrower, closer to the hilt than it is towards the middle of the blade, uh, but it comes to a point. And um, the hilt itself, uh, it's like... Uh, the hilt seems to be made <laughs> like the cross guard is iron and then the pommel is iron as well with like a ring in it but then the hilt itself is a creamy green uh, jade mm, creamy mm. green I love cream green <laughs> I think it's a great color yeah, me too. <laughs> mint it's a minty colored jade there we go <laughs> Cream greens are delicious too. I, writing a short story today, I used the word creamy green and then was like, oh, mint. <laughs> <laughs> so I've done that twice today. <laughs> Could be sage. Mm, pea soup. <laughs> uh, sorry, Soren. Um, and then the greaves themselves, uh, so they are lined with leather so that they don't like chafe on your, your forearms. Um, there are There is a design on each of them. Uh, they are sylvan, just like the uh, markings on the door. Um, I'm gonna just like hold the sword and like swing it to get like in this direction, just to get like an idea of like balance. Okay. Uh, so it is a plus one sword. Uh, so can you make a attack uh, with like a strength based martial weapon as up one of the barges that crossed uh, Lewis, the river, the Ohio River next to Lewis County where my grandma lived. <laughs> by. Uh, uh, okay, so a 19 yeah. um, plus one. Uh, so 20. Um, and the you get the sense when you swing it that this weapon, it while it is you know functionally a longsword, you can use it. Um, it just cuts strangely. Um, One-handed um, I mean, let's just say that you also use part of a long rest, figuring this out uh, for fairness on how D&D &D works. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Basically, uh, when you swing it one-handed, instead of 1d8, it'll be 2d4. Um, and when you swing it two-handed, it is 1d6 and 1d4 instead of 1d10. Okay. And then there are there's one other property to it. Uh, Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I have an idea of what it might be, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to sound dumb. Is it like a chainsaw? What do you think? What do you think it might be? 
I'm thinking just because it's even though you probably designed this earlier. Sorry, you um, cut out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, he hold on. Himself. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it this fucking Sylph Sword from Berserk? Uh, Serpico? <laughs> it, it is not. That would be cool. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all Just because right. it's a similar kind of design, and I'm, I've been thinking about Berserk. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, P. Also, yeah. Sylvan, everything. Um, it's a, it's a Zephos, but that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, you have uh, looked at a number of things. You have yeah. looked at a number of things. Um, does anyone want me to hold stuff for them? In my cool new messenger bag. <laughs> oh, um, Lady Sybil. Yeah? Uh, since you were uninterested in the hand, perhaps you should take, uh, perhaps you should take this belt and cloak. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Sybil's gonna hand it to Sebastian to put in the bag. <laughs> Done. I'll look at it later. Does somebody else, <clears throat> not me, want to open the tomb? Or should we let the man rest? I mean, I could, I think I could get this top off, but it's up to y'all. Yeah. Oh, we're going topless, and Avail starts to lift his shirt. Hell yeah, I, I mean... take mine off too. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Yeah, Stevie does too. All right, now I can really, can really get yeah. in there and push this off if we need. Um, actually, it'd probably take me a while to get everything off. But... Uh, <laughs> well, you've got some. <laughs> uh, I mean, so. You just saw Sebastian learn what the bag of holding was using a certain implement. <laughs> oh, it's crowbar. <laughs> I, have a, I, have a crow, I have a crowbar too, but uh, I can also probably just—I can probably just do it. You yeah, just, you just want to. Come on, it's Stevia. You just want to hold the mania, okay? Uh, yeah. Let me let me look at let, Stevia. Hold on, let me look at it first. Let me make sure there's no like. Weird show. Oh, open, open it as hard as Kratos opens chests. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you, you just break it. You just break yeah. it. Yeah, you just smash it. You stomp <laughs> on it and then it shatters. Oh no. <laughs> Introducing Greek <laughs> things made 26. you all decide <laughs> that the <laughs> scenery is bad. Um, Yo, I want to respect Soren okay. to just be Kratos. Um, is that something I can do? <laughs> uh, you, you could be Lotus's <laughs> son. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so with the 21, yeah, you manage to find enough purchase that you are able to just and basically <laughs> shove yeah. the uh, the lid off. Hey, buddy, cut that out. Um, and inside you see <laughs> uh, there is a corpse, uh, some decayed rags that look like once upon a time they were clothes are sort of stripping across the, the old dry bones and tiny bit of like congealed uh, death on him. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if he would become a skeleton after like 4,000 years, but <laughs> I don't know how time... He'd skeleton be a skeleton. Mommy, oh, wait, 400, 4,000 years. Yeah, he's a skeleton. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, or just goo. He's either that or just goo. So he, he is a, a skeleton. Uh, there is, on his head, however, there is a very plain crown. Uh, it's basically a circlet with uh, small, like, spikes every, like, four inches. Um, he is, for a skeleton, he is pretty big. Um, pretty big skeleton. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Like, for a human, especially from back when humans were a little bit smaller. Um, 
but other than that, uh, could I have an investigation check from only two people? Probably not me. Yeah, not me. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wise. I'm not smart. I'm neither. 21. Um, 16. Okay. Uh, with the 21 and the 16, um, you all see that there is something just beneath the small of the skeleton's back. Oh, is this a tattoo? Tramp stamp. <laughs> yeah, back. On the bone? <laughs> the bad boy's right again. <laughs> For life. Uh, Sybil's going to point it out <laughs> and say to Stevia, can you move him? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> like Kratos, like, you just <laughs> handful of the ribs throw him across yeah. the room. <laughs> um. yeah. No, I'll pick him up. I'll treat it with res enough respect uh, <laughs> that a 4,000 4, year old bodies do, I guess. Okay. But yeah, I'll just pick it up and put it outside of the on the floor. Or no, maybe I'll just pose it on the statue over here. Okay. You put it behind. It's respectful, right? Put it behind <laughs> yeah. the statue of him like, on the horse. With its, yeah, with his arms around him like he's riding <laughs> behind him. Uh, if you can read this, my skeleton fell off. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, that one got me. <laughs> Just, that would be a good sticker to have in a real world motorcycle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what you see underneath it, there is a spool of thread. It is golden thread, and it is tied around a small bronze needle. Uh... Can I, can Sybil reach her hands in to grab it? Yeah, you can reach it. Okay, Sybil's going to reach in and grab the wheel and the threads. Okay, you, you pick up the needle and thread. And uh, it sort of reminds her of when they were, they sort of relived being the old gods and her time as uh, Karima. And I think, uh, can I do an investigation on it to see what's up with this cool ass thread? Yeah. 18. You think that there is a chance that it is connected to the thread that you saw then? Whoa. Prima. Sybil's going to hold on to it. Okay. I forgot he'd do something like that. I guess I wouldn't know. So. Well, you had seen the thread that Karima had in that in that memory. So you, you oh, okay. if Sybil tells you, you might be able to make that connection yeah. as well. Um, yeah. But with a less personal relationship to it, I don't know if Stevia could roll high enough to see it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would. I'd rock it. DC would be a little high. Um, but all right. So, uh, hey gang. Are we so far taking everything? Or like, fuck it, right? We're just taking it all, right? I think that if not you, well, someone else will take. What? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna um, get my hamburger helper hand over here, and I'm gonna take the crown <laughs> off its head. Okay. And I'll. Buzz it over to me. You gonna start wearing a crown? I mean, no, not necessarily. I mean, did you put it on? Are you going to sell it? No, I did money? not put it on. Okay. If anything, Soren probably should, right? He outranks all of us. No, no, no crown. I'm. You might look good on you. I think I'm looking on you, Soren. No. You remind, me. you remind me of the bar. I'm minor, minor, minor nobility. <laughs> well, yeah, we all are, buddy. That's true. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are we just going to let 
Sebastian put everything in his new bag of holding. Um, did Stevia take the ruby out of the statue? The statue is in the in the helmet. Okay. The ruby is in the helmet. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. The ruby is in the helmet. Yeah, I've, I've got the, uh, <laughs> the statue is in the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look at it more closely in the light. The so. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just, for... just has a big <laughs> helmet on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, the North Pole. The sun is. What is the sun but a big helmet in the sky? Um, <laughs> at, a, at your next long rest, you all can figure out what everything you've got does. So uh, if we're putting it in the bag, I'll, I'll, for record keeping, it's a ruby helmet. There's greaves, right? Mm -hmm. A sword, but you can probably just hold on to that. Yeah. Um, Late 2000s belt. white rapper greaves is in the bag. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, belt and a cloak. Um... And gold. He he's gonna take the uh, the wand, right? That's what he wanted. Oh, am I? Oh, I thought you were. I thought that's why you gave the cloak and the belt back. Oh no, I thought that you all had decided that the the wand should stay here. <clears throat> we might have. We may have to keep the good stuff in the family, right? Yeah, let's well, keep the wand. I think he deserves something, though, right? He will get a ton of gold. Yeah, I just, gold is I mean, enough to set me up and get get me back to Dalsaro. I, okay. I mean, also, I guess I I don't really want the crown, but yeah, I don't care. Let, let's just I want to find we, out what the crown take is. Take it all, look it all over. Okay. And then, yeah. then decide. <laughs> um, Smart idea. He just gets a ton of gold. You'll probably tra travel with us for a little bit. We 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 can camp out tonight. Yeah. Stay with us. Okay. Thank you. Say for a numbers, you won't get turned into a pug again. I would really like to not be a pug again. No. I'd, um, at least also, like we to have be a camping dog. stuff. I'd like to be a dog who can breathe if I ever have to be a dog again. Yeah, yeah. It's weird that you were turned into a pug. You know, I, I, you, you seem more like a greyhound to me. Oh, thank you. I'll steer. Skinny and tall. I'm going to go kiss this gold. I'm not that skinny. And shirtless, you can see. He's got a little bit of muscle on him. <laughs> Uh, can we try the ruby in that light, Stevia? Just in case. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll hold the, uh, the helmet up to that beam of light. Shine directly into the, into the ruby. Uh, yeah, you can see there is an odd glow in the ruby. Um, it's almost like when you move the, ru the helmet and, um, the like padding that's sort of built into it where it normally would clang uh you see there is like a it it does clang but you see that there is like a ripple like in the water inside of the ruby <coughs> in the light interesting um, yeah it seems like uh it seems like it's like it's deep i don't know if that Makes any sense, but it's like there's something in here that that ripples with some movement. I just wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything with that. Do you want me to put my hand in it? Into the ruby? Like, into the hole. I think I could fit my hand through it. Oh, the hole is in, uh, like way above you, like... Oh, never mind. The, yeah. the roof of the part of the cave that you are in goes Just, goes up above yeah. the... I mean, I could stand on Stevia's shoulders. I could fastball especially up there. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's but just I, a I, hole. I don't, yeah, I don't know that there's any anything to gain from yeah. that. <laughs> just wanted to see how it reacted with natural light, judging by how yeah. it worked with that. Or a... Anyway... Well, I guess let's uh, hit the rickety. I think we're all done here, huh? I mean, there's a ton of gold upstairs, but yes. Yeah. Um, as yeah. I leave this room, I'm going to yell to Stevia. Um, should we put the skeleton back? You don't like no. it right there? I know it's cool, but... I think it'd be kind of fun if, you know, a long time from now, someone else breaks in here and finds nothing but <laughs> that. Skeleton riding its own statue. I think it would be a... That is really funny. <laughs> be a good, a good, good
good laugh for them, right? So they're going to need something at the end of all of it. It's a good jape. <laughs> <laughs> I say leave it. Should we put the jerk, the, the bad guy that we fought in the tomb? So they'll be like, wait, why is there a tomb with a guy from 20 years ago? Yeah, they'll have to figure out which one <laughs> is the correct one. Blow body. their minds. Wait, but aren't there more blink hyenas in this cave? Um, I think it was the, the friendlies, right? The little babies? Yeah, well, they'll grow up and then they'll eat those corpses. Oh, that's true. All right, I'm going to Scrooge McDuck this pile. Yeah. Um, so from this uh, pile notwithstanding the 350 gold that Abiel takes uh, you manage to get 2,000 gold some of that is in platinum damn Okay, 2,000 gold and, and the 497 is part of that that I put in all my clothes no that is new <laughs> gold so, okay, got it. That was me doing quick math, only remembering what you took <laughs> when you said it. <laughs> 2,000. And I mean, you know, obviously for uh, verisimilitude purposes to anyone watching uh the the two people that are two are two fans who will watch this in uh two years time when they get through the rest of the stuff that's coming before it um you know for this one's for, for you aaron this uh, one's for you <laughs> i we've got two people who aren't involved in the stream who have watched at least uh at least up to episode 16 which is a thorns episode yeah, which is nice. Nice. Um, no, but uh, you all. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, for verisimilitude purposes, obviously, it's not actually exactly two thousand gold. But who wants to keep track of that? <laughs> it's two thousand gold. I realized right. when I said the most round number, two thousand gold. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like very lazy storytelling, and it is. Yeah, it's okay. Anyone who's into like the the bureaucracy and economics to that granular of a level, it's probably just going to be disappointed in a lot of things in life. That's true. They I'm going to write made... one thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven, just so <laughs> you can feel good. <laughs> you mean the year that I was born? Uh, oh, that hurt me. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that uh, that's rough to hear. Uh, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go, guys. Um, over, over a decade after me, but that's okay. <laughs> Logan, don't say the year you were born. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, three of the numbers on the gun safe plugged in. If I hear yours, I'm gonna plug in that fourth. And it's, it's gonna be an abrupt end of the stream. <laughs> All right, heck yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm not going to tell you all what to do. <laughs> so if you want to I think we're leaving the cave. <laughs> yeah, we're just having a little bit, you know. Did we search uh, their bodies for any cool weapons? Oh, sure. I'll do that real okay. quick. Uh, sure, you find. I don't remember if I did it last time. Uh, there is the hilt of a great sword carved completely out of ice. Uh, when you pick it up, it begins to form the shape of Great's great sword with thick, thick ice freezing in the water vapor in the air. That was on the captain. Hey, Soren. Yeah. I think this one, or Stevia, one of you guys might like this. Buds for you. No, that's a little too sharp for me. I mean, I'll take it. There you go. Now you're a lightning a... and a nice dad. Yeah, bunch of weapons. <laughs> I mean, better are going to go the distance, I think. Isn't that right, bud? Verily! <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to go out of this place? Yeah. It's back to the lewd cave entrance now exit i forgot about it <laughs> there's a few loot maps in this in this area i can't help it <laughs> yeah it's hard it's really hard not to when you're once we're once we're off stream i'll 
remind everybody of the map that I made that Aaron, who was producing the episode it was in, literally <laughs> had to maneuver the map strategically throughout the encounter so that it didn't look like something. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, you all have made it out into back into the wilderness. Uh, what time does it... <laughs> well, never mind. It's in the Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah, it's in the chat. <laughs> uh, what what time of day is it? Is uh, it is like midnight, and the stars and you. Should we just set up right out here? Uh, maybe not right by the entrance, in case those like other hyena dogs. Yeah, maybe get out in the woods a little bit and build us a fire, keep them away. Yeah, let's do it. I'm running low on preserved meats. I might need to stock up soon. I'm surprised you didn't try to take any of that blink hyena meat. Yeah, all the hyena meat. Oh, man, I should have. All right, I got to go back now. <laughs> oh, gee. Um, but we can say, we can say that this map is the. We'll just stay on yeah. this for the campsite uh, that you all make up. Uh, I know what part of camping you're looking forward to, so <laughs> you all set up. You all set up your camp, and I will have you all just tell me in what order you would like to learn about your items. <laughs> gather Thank around the camp. Santa. Gather around the campfire. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm like Father Christmas showing up to give the the peasants <laughs> their toys. <laughs> uh, this just shows how uh, unfairly skewed the magic item handing out has been, giving the magic items to every team but you all. <laughs> yeah. This group basically has batterer and nothing else until now. <laughs> I have, oh, I have like turtle rings. Oh yeah, you have two great rings. Yeah. We can we can like powers and stuff though. Like, yeah, I can turn into the lion for me to forge armor. Sword has some lightning stuff. Like we get. Yeah. We get magic powers instead. Of I'm magic. a living magic weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, check out this helmet. Okay. See what's up. Yeah. All right. So, uh, spending a little under an hour with it, uh, what you realize is uh, it grants you no bonus to AC. Um, unless it is worn with light or medium armor. When it is worn with light yeah. or medium armor, it will grant you a plus one bonus, um, basically allowing you to move a little medium quicker. Armor now. Um, you are. Yeah, chainmail. Chainmail's heavy. Is it heavy? I yeah. thought it was still medium. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so it'll give you a plus one when you are wearing either of those, uh, but when you are wearing uh, heavy armor, you may choose uh, once a day, and it requires attunement, um, not to get the AC bonus with the lower armors, but for this feature, uh, you have to be attuned to it. Uh, once a day for five minutes, the helmet will create basically a anti-sound field around your body casting the silent spell on only your armor making it so that you can uh, sneak without disadvantage that's rad for five minutes that's good so the, the uh, ripple in the ruby is a sound wave okay You're wearing a very yeah. ostentatious helmet when you do it. But, uh, yeah, no, it is a it is a little bit much for Stevia. That's the only thing. It is a little bit garish for her taste, but I don't know. I might be I might be willing to part with it if someone else uh, someone else is interested in it. So I will. I don't know. Probably be mostly in heavy armor eventually. And yeah, it just doesn't fit Stevie's aesthetic too much. 
Not me. I gotta let my hair breathe. <laughs> it's gotta flow, baby. Yeah, I drew all of the Ericsons with the most glorious hair possible. I mean, Sydney yeah. also has really nice hair. Sybil, <laughs> uh, I think this would uh, this ruby might go with your complexion pretty well. The ruby? Yeah. <laughs> I mean the helmet in general, but just the ruby in it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let me take a look at the cloak and belt. Okay. Um, pulling them out, you look over them, the cloak, uh, you quickly realize, just a nice cloak. Very well made. Be a good, be a good element of other pieces. Uh, the belt is more interesting. Uh, because when you look over it, you realize that there is actually something uh, stitched into the leather on the inside of the sort of back half of the belt. Uh, it's covered with old dust from when it was in that, that chest. Uh, but when you begin to look it over and you, you put it back on, uh, you find that there are... Uh, three symbols, and you can identify them pretty quickly as the alchemical signal for symbol, not signal, the alchemical symbol for fire. Uh, Sybil, you're about to rest, so I think it just you can just uh, do this uh, once a day, and you'll do it to figure out what it is. But once a day, you can cast the spell Scorching Ray. You oh, fuck yeah! Your belt is <laughs> blasting. Does it come out of the belt buckle? It does come out of the belt buckle. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, oh, no. <laughs> the bull's going to specifically, like, wear it in a way that it will not come out. Like, yeah. It's Aoyama. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wear the belt around your waist. You could, like, Final Fantasy it and have it around yeah. your arm or something. Yeah, around your shoulder. Uh, put it, it could go arm, literally anywhere if we're in the Final leg. Fantasy. Leg, I think, is cool. Your sword. <laughs> your kneecap, like, anywhere. Yeah. All right, who's next? Your belt could be, a, your sword <laughs> could be a belt. Yeah, it's, that's what Xenoblade's about. Or the cloak. <laughs> The cloak is just a cloak. Just a cool question about the belt. Cloak. What's your question? Mechanically. So Scorching Ray is a second level spell. I got three bolts. I use this spell a lot as a wizard. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I have to, do I use up one of my own spell slots or is it it's just, just... It's just the belt. Uh, okay, so it's always second level. Always second level, yeah. But you get it once a day, every day. No spell slots. Okay. It, requ okay. it requires attunement. Mm -hmm. um, most of what you all got requires attunement. Take it to Crown Town, baby. Uh, Crown Town, unfortunately, doesn't seem like the crown is is magical in nature. Uh, when you're looking it over. I'm not mad. <laughs> it's, it's made out of tin, from what you can tell. Now I'm mad. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Does it make me look like Jughead? Do I want hamburgers? <laughs> you do. You've never had a hamburger. <laughs> but you suddenly want one, you vegan rogue. <laughs> oh, do I want impossible burgers? You want impossible burgers. <laughs> Good. Can you just say, look at me. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a freak. I'm different. That's why I wear this crown. Does Soren then have to say you don't know the highs and lows of high school football? <laughs> You don't know the highs and lows of high school dungeoneering. <laughs> of high I don't school. want your life. <laughs> I'm sorry. The epic highs and lows of high school. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> of high school hoop and stick game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else you all want to investigate? You want to look? Um, 
sword and greaves. All righty, sword and greaves. Uh, so the sword, basically, you have what you already know. Uh, plus one sword. It is uh, 2d4 when it's one-handed, 1d4, 1d6 for two-handed. Um, and, uh, well, so you, you figure out uh, the name of the sword is uh, Shield Tusk. If you would like to keep that name, or if you can keep it as as Ziphos. Um, uh, one word or two words? Uh, it is... In my notes, it is one word. About okay. it. Um, Got it. And the additional property of it is that uh, when you are fighting an enemy in... When you are fighting a enemy in uh, heavy armor, if you score a critical hit on them, their AC drops uh, by one. And Dang. the the time limit on that is if it's, good. if it's magical armor, it basically lasts for an hour. If it's non-magical armor, it is until they get repaired. Damn. That's pretty good. So on a crit hit, you would uh, basically lower their AC by one. Um, okay. Uh, for the Greaves, they are... Greaves of orcish kind. Um, so while wearing these, uh, you speak orcish. Your critical hits have the uh, brutal critical effect. The uh, oh. half orc feat that lets you add an additional damage dice. Uh, you, if you wear the greaves consistently, you will start to grow taller. Uh, and you will start to grow tusks. Uh, those have no stat bonuses, but you do start to grow a little stronger. While you are wearing them, you have plus one to your strength. Okay. That's rad. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh... Also, sorry, to uh, clarify based on a t the thing that Aaron said in chat. Um, uh, shield Tusk does not, like, you can't keep doing it to the same person. Um, yeah. One critical per enemy that you're fighting in heavy armor, uh, their AC drops. So if you somehow got <laughs> 20 criticals on the same person, you wouldn't <laughs> dismantle their AC. Yeah, you know, I'm scared to use the wand. I can heal you afterwards if something goes awry. Can you heal my hand back to onto my body? Yeah, maybe. I will certainly try. I believe it. Uh, I'm going to try <laughs> to use the wand. <laughs> Okay, uh, so describe to me how that works. What are you doing? Um, well, first I'm going to try to get the other hand off of the wand. Uh, that serves as a problem. Mm -hmm. You can't get it off with your natural strength, Sebastian. Because I'm weak or because... Feels like you, you would have... Feels like even Stevia would have little chance to get this off. Hmm. And by little, I mean <laughs> next to none. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe just cast it with your hand. Touching like, that hand. The hand? Yeah. Maybe. Um, here's what I'll do. I'm going to use my mage hand to lift up the hand in front of me. And then I'm going to cast Minor Illusion to make it look like I have another arm attached to that. And I'm going to try to cast out of it. Um, unfortunately, I don't know, the Illusion... I don't know if Mage Hand can use this. Yeah, your, your Mage Hand cannot use wands. Uh, you're right. All right, I'm going to try to hold the hand and 
cast out of it. <laughs> All right. When you do so, uh, what is the highest level spell slot that you have, Sebastian? Uh, second. Second. Okay. Uh, uh, wow. Okay. Let me check first level. <laughs> Okay, um, you lift the wand and you point it at a tree, and this, like when Sybil cast the rays of fire using her belt, belt uh, you cast this ray of green energy that streaks out and crashes against the tree doing nothing. But then you all see uh, several lightning bugs that had been floating all drop dead in the range of that I don't like uh, it. Bolt. You have cast Ray of Sickness. Um, and what your wand does is uh, it lets you cast uh, every day up to your intelligence modifier of necromancy spells on the sorcerer spell list that are uh, spells of levels that you have. Okay. So if you use all of your spell slots naturally, like say when you have up to when you have third level spell slots, if you use all your third level spell slots, you will no longer be able to use a third level necromancy spell using this wand. I understand, but it does not take up the slot, right? Yeah, and you know what? I did not realize when I was writing this. Uh, it'll be the wizard spell list instead of the sorcerer spell list because there are more necromancy spells on the on the wizard one. Cool. Oh, I'm evil now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily evil. You could always think of necromancy as giving purpose to something that has moved on, it, whose spirit has moved on. And I mean, a lot of clerics practice necromancy to, to some exactly. degree. You know? Like, I think a spell I have... And like Sora and, and even Stevia have, we just we sort of help save somebody from the brink of death, and that's considered necromancy. Okay. I mean, do you want to swap? Do you want to have the fire belt? No. Are you It'll sure? Be right. as as, I, I as really as don't want to hold this good. hand. I think the holding the hand is the part I don't like. Wrap it in cloth yeah. or something. What if we get it a glove for the hand? What if we try to sew a glove onto the hand? Yeah. <laughs> I put it in the bag. I don't want to touch it anymore. Maybe we could talk to somebody when we get into Ursamir. We're going to find me a therapist again? I mean, that, but... Uh... We could do improv. It seemed to help that other guy. <laughs> no, but... Uh... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, I'll take first watch here if we're all ready to settle down. Yeah. Uh, better on you. Oh, you I got out. cut out for me. I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, do you want the greaves? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. You don't want to. You don't want to wear. No, I think they'd work much better for you. Okay. Um, Skill set. How about this helmet? You want you want to trade for the helmet? I don't know. If it cut out again. We also may be able to just like trade stuff for other stuff, you know. It's true. Could go into town. I don't think we've ever shopped. I love shopping. <laughs> yeah, he seemed like that. Yeah. He, yeah. I, I do kind of want the greaves because I just want to see how tall I can get. 
I'm cool with tusks. That's well, fine. so for you it wouldn't work. I'm sorry to say. It can only, oh, make, no. it can only make you. It can only make you as tall as orcs, <laughs> and you're already taller than most orcs get. Uh, Would she still grow the tusks? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was as an. I was willing to take the tusks for the height. I don't know. Ah, oh, see, to me, I've... the tusks are the cool part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is that is also pretty cool. I'm at max strength, though. You could have two characters who have spent some time at 21. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll take them. I'll, I'll yeah. put them on. Um, I can already speak orcish, but I'm extra fluent. Stevia, a champion fighter? Yes. I am defense. Oh, what, really? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, sorry, wait. yeah. No, you're, you're a champion. You crit on 19s. Yeah, because then oh, yeah, you have that's true. Uh, improved critical, so it's way better for you. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's also true. I can ha make that happen a lot more. I think, I okay, think I yeah, said, I said, yeah, it's good synergy. Sorry, I said uh, brutal critical. I meant savage attacks. Yeah, yeah. Brutal critical is... Like ninth That's level barbarian, barbarian thing, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. My barbarian is a human who's raised by orcs. So to me, whenever I look at the at the at the level up stuff, I'm always like, oh, at level nine, he'll really feel closer to his parents. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess with that and multiple attacks, I could probably get people down pretty good. And yeah, I guess we could just keep the helmet in the back in our back pocket in case we ever need to be sneaky. Whatever. Mm -hmm. What does the helmet do if you're wearing heavy armor it's again? To be attuned, but... uh, when you are wearing heavy armor, uh, you can once a day for five minutes. You basically just don't have disadvantage on stealth checks if you're wearing heavy okay. armor. Okay. Um, because <coughs> you cast silence just centered on your armor. My stealth isn't really good enough. <laughs> Even with that. Yeah, mine's pretty bad, too. I mean, if we learn it's just the ruby. If it's just How the ruby, then that might... Ditch the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Hair out. <laughs> Reforge the helmet. Turn it into a, like an actual magical crown for Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> Make him even better. <laughs> So, uh, rest-wise, is it going to be Stevia first? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, I'll go second. I'll go third. Okay, um, oh. let's take our five-minute break, and then we will come back. Yeah. So we will be back at 7.38. Ooh, baby, my favorite time. Ooh. Uh, let me go to break. Let me go to break. Hunter, are you still here? Yeah. I made the belt do scorching gray because I know it's your favorite spell. That's why Avi. That's why. That's why Avael did not take it. <laughs> in char in character, he would have happily taken something magical that would keep him from getting turned into a pug. But. <laughs> yeah, and then you also had a bone. Ah.
And we're back. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sucked World Saga. Uh, we are going to start off with you all. Uh, you picked out your uh, your rest order. Can you please make perception checks? Stevia. <laughs> yeah. Twenty. Then it's me. Twenty. Then it's story. Twenty. Yeah. Somebody That's open it. up. Chris. Somebody open up a monster energy to stay up. During. Monday night. <laughs> Woohoo! Hell yeah! Uh, it's Soren's turn to roll for perception. Okay. Yeah, Soren cracks open a cold one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let Hold. us down, Sebastian. That's a Jason Momoa gif where he folds out the lawn chair. <laughs> uh, when he was the love interest of yeah. one of the characters on the game. Uh, Sebastian? Oh, okay. Um, I got high before I went to sleep. Do I have to do this at disadvantage? Uh, yes, please. Cool. And Brian, uh, also, do you remember when you were uh, when you played a love interest for one of the characters on the game? <laughs> what's that now? <laughs> Nothing. I was just doing it. <laughs> that was on the Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. Six. Six. All right. <laughs> 20, I am literally 20, doing. Six. I'm doing my watch staring at this wall. I use my uh, stone to cast color spray at this wall, and I'm just staring well, at that. Well, so I did need to tell you. Um, <laughs> so everybody goes to sleep, and Sybil. Uh, so so Soren, uh, you sleep for your initial uh, six hours very pleasantly, and then you have another two pleasant hours after your watch. Uh, Stevia, after your first two hours of your watch, where, where nothing happens, you go to sleep, pleasant dreams, uh, nothing, nothing bad. You, you, you two probably don't even remember your dreams when you wake up, in all honesty. Um, however, Sybil, uh, when you wake up, you have this strange memory of <laughs> suddenly finding yourself in a crystal of some type. And shooting through a void filled with stars and finding yourself in a dwarven citadel. Traveling beneath the ground with Sebastian and a woman with tattoos on her face and striking hair uh, named Althea. You also remember the uh, dwarven scholar knight who you were, you were a little rude to. Uh, but ultimately <laughs> he was pretty nerdy I think he deserved it <laughs> yep nothing like being earnest to make someone deserve to be bullied um, but you you ventured uh, deep below the citadel okay off. I would like to say I did not turn myself into him and then make fun of him behind his back I just did little hands I know <laughs> Two people turned into him and made fun of him behind his back. That's true. You were the you were the nicest one of his of his bullies. Um, hey, in the next game, can I play Ernest? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Figure out what the importance of being you is. <laughs> yeah, we're we're really just every version of Ernest. Oh. <laughs> uh, but you. Yeah, I'm Ernest. Goes to camp. <laughs> I yeah, Z uh, stevia is the importance of being. <laughs> earnest, <laughs> earnest, comma the importance of being. Sebastian <laughs> is Ernest goes to jail. Uh, I'm Ernest scared stupid. <laughs> which I mean, if that had come before Ernest goes to jail, he would have avoided it. Or no, that's scared straight. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Sybil, you wake up. And you remember all of it, and it feels suspiciously real. And uh, when you look over to, well, what, after your watch, you go to wake up Sebastian. And Sebastian, you had all the same memories, uh, particularly bullying. Is the he cuddling the, cold, the color spray stuff? Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
Sebastian, you wake up after remembering that you bullied a nice dwarf. Uh, but then you connected with him at the end. Uh, and you see in your hand, Sybil, you see in your brother's hand, the Stone of Color Spray. And it Where is. I get this? And you also remember the uh, woman named Althea. Well. God, I. Did you have that dream too? Yeah, I'm not sure if it was a dream exactly. But I was sleeping. And now. Yeah, it's... but then how do you have the thing? I don't know what you're talking about. What? What? It was in my hand. Um, it had to be a dream, right? We were sleeping. And now it's tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, uh, good night. Oh, okay. Good chat. Let's stare at this wall again. All right. Uh, <laughs> and, uh,. Oh, wait, Logan, then Sybil actually says, never mind, Sebastian, it's not your watch, and wakes up <laughs> Soren, <laughs> and Soren has his watch, um, and then he wakes up, Sebastian. Uh, Soren, your watch, there is no incident. Um, Sebastian, during Did your... Did you want to talk, Soren? No? Okay. It's my watch I mean, if you, you all are all welcome to have... Com you are welcome to initiate no. conversations at any time. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Sebastian... Um, at one point, you think that you hear something, and you can see uh, Abael a short distance from his uh, his sleeping bag, and you can see he has his dagger out, and it just looks like he is talking to himself. Hey, hey dude. Uh, as, oh, yeah. as you approach, oh. he is saying, Of course, Commander, I am. Oh, wait, hold on. <clears throat> of course, Commander, I am happy to be back as well. I give. Uh, Anyone who remembers my name, uh, please give them my love. And then he sees you approaching, and he rolls his knife down and sheaths it, and uh, starts pretending to be singing. Uh, and you notice with the voice that you uh, have heard him using before. Mm. Uh, everything okay, Abiel? Oh, uh, yes. Everything is, is fine. I was just reminiscing. Are you doing a monologue? Uh, no. Uh, well, I'll be honest. As a as a pug, I uh, didn't have anyone to speak to. So it was nice to have a few moments to, to speak with you all, but I'm, I'm not as used to it as I once was. I, I used to be very convincing. <laughs> Now I'm, uh, I've been I've been used to having no one to speak to and only able to hold conversations in my own mind. And so occasionally I think I was struck a few times after you all fixed me with the want to speak my thoughts aloud. Okay, but you're okay, right? Oh, yes. Because I'm, like, cool with whatever, you know? But... I mean, you see those three people behind us, right? Yes. I'm never going to put you ahead of them. You understand that, right? I wouldn't ask you to, their family. Okay. As long as you understand that, then you can do whatever you weird shit you want to do. No, well, uh, and I'll be honest, Sebastian. Yeah. Can you hold out your hand? 
Yeah, I can. Which one? The dead hand? The no, no, no. Li hand or... uh, living hand. <laughs> okay. I put out my hand. You want left or right? Uh, either or. <laughs> okay. And, I'll uh, give you left. As soon as you have your palm up, uh, you notice the faintest trickle of like the red outline of a finger mm. above it. And then you feel tracing in Thieves Cant protection. Okay. Good. I am an exceptional thief, Sebastian Erickson. And though I have a few scores to settle back in Darcero, I doubt that I can ply any trade but burglary. He gives you a smile. Yeah. I uh, feel the same way about myself. So, you and your family have nothing to fear from me. Okay. Everyone else? I, all my instincts say that is true, so I trust <laughs> you. Yeah, but once when he says you have nothing to fear from me, he goes, he says, everyone else? And then he smiles and looks away. Yeah, hell, hell yeah. I'm, I'm for that too, honestly. <laughs> I look at my sister, make sure she's not awake. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you want, when we get to this next town, I, I haven't stolen anything in a while. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah, All right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> he does the, you with his invisible mage hand, he does the uh, forearm clasp with you. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Oh, do you want to Fuck do it, that? Do dude. you want to do that with your mage hand? <laughs> yeah, let's let's just, let's just high five with them. Let's let's just let it all out. All right. Free yeah. high five. And it's morning yeah. now. Yeah. You all are ready. Power love. <laughs> you all are ready to uh, go out and uh, do your thing. Do your thing. You ready to travel? Um, um. Wake up! And I shake Sybil. <laughs> oh my god, why would you do that? Sybil keeps on a little makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to. Um. <laughs> oh, we're so old, Zach. Oh um. <laughs> <laughs> just lost. Well, Chief, uh, what's the plan? Do we, we think we're gonna go back to the thorns, or no? We got. Didn't go they have another the option for us? We had to do the water thing. Oh, yeah. the, the water's polluted, or something, and we also have to go and see that doctor or a scientist. And we also should escort Abiel to the town. Yeah. So what what should we do first? Um, well, the so water thing was... Sorry. sorry uh, the water thing was connected to that scientist, which yeah. was also the guy who was going to give me a new eye. And we have a lot of gold to pay him if he asks. I look at my bag. I'm like, I don't know about gold. It's empty. Deception check. <laughs> Can I immediately pass it? Like, I know he has that gold. I saw him put it in his bag. <laughs> yeah. I think you didn't get, uh, let's say that the DC to deceive was a 29. Get that. You, you no. didn't get that. Um, which is very easy for me to get, honestly. Um. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's totally obtainable. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes. <laughs> Keep lying. 30. <laughs> uh, no, so Sybil, you, you know that. He's, he's got it. Yeah. Well, hell yeah. So the town... The town. Um, you into that town? What was the town called again? Operon. It's a city. Yes. Uh oh. I'm, I'm part of their book club, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nah. 
Uh, you all start to approach Operon. Uh, it is a large city. Um, you can see from outside as you approach uh, from the north, from the, well, so it looks like it's north on the map, but it is the west. Uh, it was the only way that this, I liked the look of the map and I couldn't flip it. Um, you, you are coming from this direction and you can see that there is basically like a small city outside of the walls in each cardinal direction around a circular walled city. Um, and you are approaching. Uh, you can see as you are getting closer that periodically there are a few um, guards in like light gambesons with uh, sort of tall spears and, and scimitars and hatchets, bows. Seems like it is very much a more rudimentary militia than you might have expected, except for every now and then you see like a well-armed guard who seems experienced. Um, you think pre probably pretty likely that there are like people who have been uh, allowed to volunteer for a generous amount of money to be a, a guard in the city now. And then what's stranger is as you get closer, uh, as you are actually walking through the raven dens uh, beyond the shade of the walls of Operon, uh, you can see every few, like, uh, not every few, you can see like every 40 yards there is a massive stone golem uh, who is just, just no. standing, watching. And y'all know Polymorph? <laughs> And uh, you are. Have we ever seen anything like that before? Uh, Golem, uh, make yeah. uh, make an Arcana check. Uh, you saw a much less advanced version of something like this. You saw you saw a stone golem, but it was not. It did not look this human-like. And you see one of them move, and you can see that they move a lot faster than. Uh, any that you're familiar with. Do they look like iRobots? No, they just, they look like, uh, sort of lumpy statues. <laughs> I mean, not not okay. lumpy. They look, they look like bulky statues. Okay. Um, and then looking at them, you can see there is like a little bit of, of clayish texture that hasn't been fully heated. So they, they look a little bit malleable. And what direction is it that we're coming in? Uh, you are coming from the west, which is the top of this map. Okay. Into the Raven Dens. I like the sound of that. All right. Who's, uh, uh, do we need to talk to the guards? Does it feel like there's like, no. Um, so if you, if you all want to just keep going, you can make it to the gate. Yeah, I don't want. I don't what are the Raven want Dens like because it's kind of like yeah. kind of slummy. Um, so for Ursumer, it's kind of like a slum, but even like not not really. Um, in Zeshan, you feel like it is the equivalent of a slum outside of the walls in Zeshan. Um, but it seems like there is a little bit more space. It looks like the people are a little bit more well looked after. You actually see uh, people wearing the colors of the Arm of Commerce, which are uh, blue and, like, copper metal pieces, like, worn as belts and bracelets. Mm -hmm. um, you can see a few, periodically you will see a few people, like, bringing carts of food that they seem to just be letting people pick off of. Um, uh, Sebastian... You definitely notice a few things marked in, in Thieves' Kit. Okay, I was about to ask that, yeah. Uh, and uh, there are a few people who look like they are carrying weapons that are more concealed that your all's adventurer eyes can make out. Okay. Is there any like uh, is there? You said there's commerce like happening in the streets. Is there stands? Uh, yeah, there are stands and stuff 
Uh, it seems like it's mostly uh, food. <laughs> mostly food. food. There are like leather working stuff, and you could get a you could get a sash with a bunch of uh, pouches, like a Rob Liefeld character. Hell yeah! As we as we go down, I am gonna like at least get one thing from every food stall that like my cooked food stall that we go past and eat. Okay. Uh, yeah, that will no, be that'll be two gold in total for the okay. whole like mile and a half walk through the Raven's Den. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's fair. I look for any pears. Uh, you do. <laughs> you do see some pears. Oh, I'm gonna get a whole bunch. Pears of what? Are you gonna buy more pears? Yeah, dude. These are a delicacy in some places. <laughs> I buy five pairs. But the worst part of fruit salad. <sighs> okay, you buy Probably. five pairs. That's like a silver. No, it's like three silver. Sorry. <laughs> I give them six. Oof. A flush. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Do you all choose to just go straight on through? Yeah, I think to the other side. All right. Uh, so you make it into the walled city of Operon. Uh, let me take you to the interesting map. Uh, so there are a, a number of taller buildings, but you can see that most of the buildings here seem to be made out of uh, sandstone uh, with a little bit of, uh, well, a, a generous amount of uh, paint, and then there is some, like, blasted marble around. And it is a beautiful city. It seems like there is a purposeful geometry, so that when you are coming in from the west, like, certain buildings frame what you can tell are probably, like, the temples that are uh, in various spots throughout the city. Like, from the gate, you can see framed by other tall buildings between two or just past three that get slightly taller. Uh, you can see the temple to the arm of governance or the arm of war. Um, it seems like the most of the buildings, if they are painted, seem to be painted like a nice blue, uh, which you all can make a religion check. If well, one of you or two of you can make a religion check. Yeah. Twenty-three. Okay, twenty-three. Um, yeah. The uh, in Koshantrianism, uh, blue is associated with the arm of war in times uh, where the fate of warriors is uncertain. It has associations which, with each of the other arms, but uh, its strongest association is with the arm of war. Okay. I tell that to my party. Uh. What's, our, uh, what's our goal here in town? We're just kind of shopping and Shopping and going, or we need to find that scientist. Uh, Sybil, do you remember his name? Hassan Furnas. Um, yeah, we need to find him. I guess we could ask around then. Yeah, Hassan. <laughs> yeah. There's oh, he's right here? Oh, no, you, you just see a guy walking next to you with, uh, like, he is, he's leading uh, one donkey uh, who has a few, like, blankets draped over him. Yeah. Hey, well, are, you, are, you, are you a scientist? Uh, no. You're um, not Hassan Furnas, are you? Oh, no, the inventor. No, I'm not. Do you know where oh, we could you know, find the inventor? You know him? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> could you tell us? Sure, I could. 
Do you want money? No. Would you like me to tell you? Yes, please. Okay. And he smiles. Uh, <laughs> and he turns and he points. I have a, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. Um, He's a real Jordan Peterson type. Um. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, he points sort of towards the... I just saw him pop a pill. He points sort of towards the middle of the town, and then he angles his hand a little bit to the north. Um, and he said, he says, he has a, uh, a tower that st- shoots up in the middle. It's where he's allowed to uh, store his inventions and, and work on them. I, uh, I went by and he, he put a few axles on a cart for my brother-in-law. It was nice. It's a high-level invention. Um, how much for your donkey? Uh, well, nothing. I, I don't want to sell. He's, he's my companion and he helps me. He helps me. With 20 gold. Okay. <laughs> we don't need a donkey. Sometimes you got to prove to people that, you know, money means more Another than one. anything else. <laughs> Have we had a donkey before? I think that was the other getting crew. Oh, man. You all have yeah. goats. Realize... <laughs> oh, yeah. We had goats. That's right. I don't you realize you could just sub in your soul bond, right? Shh. You can't tell people about that. What do you mean we can't tell people about that? It is common knowledge. Yeah, I have soul bonds. What? <laughs> Aubrey, do you have a soul bond? Uh, yes. I really don't understand this world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll tell you back. That's, a, so that's a <laughs> bad job on my part. <laughs> no, it's not you. It's not you. It is definitely Sebastian. Um, I think there's plenty of available literature at your disposal to <laughs> to learn. Now. I can't. Everyone read. has a soul bond. <laughs> yes, you can. You went to college. Nope. I'm Jordan Catalano. I can't read. <laughs> he he went to Jupiter. Get more stupid. Whoa! I'll sell you back <laughs> your donkey for twenty-two gold. <laughs> In the long run, you'll probably make more of that for, from the donkey. So yeah. it's a good deal. Did he just leave? He took that 20 gold and split. Oh, so man. <laughs> he left, he even took the donkey the with him. City. No, he didn't take your money. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I'll hunt you down, Hassan. Um, okay, let's go to the tower. Yeah. Soren, did you want to ask Hassan anything? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a donkey. But do you want a donkey? No. And Mas- Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a donkey is 13th. <laughs> yeah. All right, we go to the tower. <laughs> Uh, so you all start heading that way. Um, as you draw closer, you to notice there are uh, pretty broadly, there are a lot of people sort of gathered around the tower. Um, as you draw closer to it. The tower doesn't seem very wide, but it does seem very tall. Um as you have have grown closer to it, uh, but you can see that oh, yeah, somebody's compensating for some. Somebody's compensating for putting more people on the map before he puts you all there. Um, <laughs> and uh, I literally forget it every session. <laughs> I have all my maps ready, but I don't have people on. Them. <laughs> um, 
Uh, is there like an alley I can duck into while we're walking, just for a second? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm gonna get into a place where I don't think anyone's watching me, and I'm gonna cast this guy's self, and just make myself look pretty much the same, but without Thorin's markings or anything like that, or uh, visible weapons, things like that. Okay. You have two eyes. What's that now? You're gonna have two eyes. Six. <laughs> <laughs> where are the other four? Um, uh, they're all, uh, suns on my stomach going around my belly button and sublime is written under it. <laughs> Honestly, very horrifying. Yeah. Wearing, wearing a shirt feels awful. <laughs> we learned that. Um, but Did you yeah. ever put your shirt back on? I've ne I'm never wearing clothes again. Except for border shorts. Um. <laughs> you all approach and you can see there are a, a lot of people uh, standing around and sort of uh, like talking in hushed, hushed whispers. They are all looking up at the tower. Why's everybody being so quiet? Uh, we don't want to spook him. Uh, look up, I guess. Yep, and you can see there is a man <laughs> in uh, what looks like this red, like, thin robe over what look like almost like... Uh, they look kind of like monk robes, but a little more, like, free to move in them. Uh, and he has his head covered, and he looks like... He's got his back, and it looks like he's sort of hunched over, but he is standing, like, right on the edge. He, he said he was going to jump. His his brother is going to talk him out of it, but we, we don't know if it'll work. Uh, is that Hassan Fernandez? It is. Uh, um, and Civil... What? Sorry, I was going to say what happened next. No, go ahead. Uh, you see the man on top turn around and then he steps back away from the roof and this wave of calm washes over everyone and then you see him run and leap off sort of but it seems like he's trying to go for distance when he leaps and he starts to hurtle down towards you and people uh, are covering their eyes and then I'm trying to catch him Simple bonus action turns into a bat form of herself using her spiritual form, and then she tries to fly up. Okay. Uh, what's your speed for that? Uh, 15 feet flying. You gain 15 feet of flying speed. Okay. Um, that's not going to be fast. fast enough to reach him before he throws his arms out. And you see that he has strapped onto his back a contraption that is covered in feathers. And he starts to glide just a little bit. And then you see he starts to rock his shoulders back and forth and then flap his arms. And he starts to just slightly gain way. And then he sees you flying towards him. And shock crosses his eyes and he stops uh <laughs> flapping his wings no. and then he he falls about 20 feet <laughs> uh and you can hear him go oh, 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 as he lands on one of his legs and you hear it snap and uh people start to rush to him <sighs> Okay, I would just like to say that yeah. is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> A bat creature! <laughs> A few people run away. <laughs> I dispel the spirit thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I 
like force my way through and do uh, healing word. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to find a way to land. <laughs> hey, anybody see a bat? Mm, I haven't seen the. Have you seen any sort of club like a, or anything? Any, anybody seen no. a, anybody seen an attractive bat? <laughs> Saw a, a good look. No. All right. Well, uh, sorry about that, folks. I know you were all. <laughs> cast, I cast thaumaturgy, and there's a bat scream in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> bat creature, and two more people run away. <laughs> um, uh, quick question: Were you intrigued by the bat or horrified by the bat? Oh, I was I was intrigued. I've, I've I'm trying to. I, I had a, like a cool inventor voice for this guy. Um, it worked out before the session, but now I don't have it. I'm. I was intrigued. We can find it. We I was. Yeah, let's take the time to find it. I was. Yeah, in, it's Doc Brown. No, he's meant to sound like he's kind of like from the twenties. Uh, I was intrigued. Oh, there we go. Like, I was intrigued. Mid Atlantic. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dr. Fraser Crane. I was intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Where's his, where's his brother Niles? Is he in the house? Uh, he does have a brother. <laughs> uh, he, looks, he looks around at everybody and he says, uh, Sorry, everyone. I know that you were very intrigued at the concept of my uh, falling to my death, but uh, looks like the wings work. And he throws out his hands so that everybody can see the feathers and a bunch of the feathers, <laughs> like kind of fall off. I'll find it. I'll find an agent. I'll find an agent if we we'll, we'll stick it to him. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, sir. And the crowd slowly begins to disperse, uh, awestruck by what they had seen. A man flying for a few moments. Uh, what is what is your name, uh, gentlemen? Who? Showed up and was able to. Oh, I'm Soren. I'm gonna get a little more twenties. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I can't thank you enough. Would you like a like a bit of tea? Oh, I'd love some. Uh, my friends and I were actually here to uh, speak with you briefly, if you have the time. Oh, marvelous! Uh, well, come on in. And he turns and he. Lo takes a lever that is next to his door and both door like he has two he has like double doors um and they slide into his wall come on double doors. and when you enter you can see that there is just stuff like scattered across the ground but none of it is like like it is like unorganized but it seems almost organized like almost every book or scroll or sheet of paper that he has on the ground is accompanied by other stuff like someone was like laying down to study it and write and do stuff with it um and he comes in and he starts taking off the uh red outer robe so that he can start to take off the robe that you see as a part of the uh, the contraption that was on his back. Uh, my name's uh, Carson Fernos, by the way. Pleasure to meet you all. <coughs> uh, Hi, I'm Sebastian. <laughs> Pleasure. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Sebastian. I'm Sybil. I'm uh, Abiel. Your voice changed because I already had this voice. Ah, well, good to know, <laughs> Sybil. Uh, Sebastian, what was your name, miss? Oh, me? Yes. Oh, I'm uh, I'm Stevia. I'll, I'll like grab his hand, whether it's outstretched or not, and like shake it a little, a little violently. Oh, <laughs> as you you shake him up and down. Uh, <laughs> Marvel. Uh, man, could, man could write a poem about that grip. Uh, oh, please do. Ah, very well. I'll start to compose something now. And he takes out a sheet of paper <laughs> and he sits down and licks it. I look forward to hearing it. And, and dips it in. I'll, I'll wait. I put your hand upon my grip <laughs> and you grip, I grip, we grip. 
It's a hint. <laughs> it's still too old, man. It's still too old. <laughs> 97. <laughs> oh, um. uh, okay. Hey, so I was sent here to ask for your help. Oh, uh, yeah. How, how can I help you? And he's, he is intently working on his poem. <laughs> Um, my, oh, go ahead. My brother lost an eye to a dragon, and we had heard that you could perhaps craft him a replacement. He looks up from his poem at you, Sybil, when you say that, and then he looks over at you, Sebastian. You notice he looks at his at your eye socket. <coughs> then he goes to the corner of the parchment that he's writing his poem on and you see him he draws this <coughs> circle and it's like a little bit squiggly and he scratches it out and then he draws a perfect circle <laughs> and then you see he puts uh, like five numbers on one side of it and then he draws a line and puts another number next to it and he says I'd, I'd be happy to try uh, might need a little bit of material uh, one second and then he goes back to writing his poem <laughs> No problem. All right. Uh, so, and he lifts his parchment and he turns to Stevia. A grip to find is always kind. A new companion, just a stranger behind. Huh? Good. Oh yeah, that's that's the whole the whole the whole poem. I write short verse. Uh, my brother, he's he he writes longer stuff. I I dabble in the longer stuff, but I prefer. Uh, oh no, I didn't. I didn't mean to sound ungrateful. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so what? What uh, business about a dragon and an eye? How'd you lose your eye to a dragon? I figured you would lose more than that. Gets a big old. Um, while was killing it, it shot ice into my brain. Oh. Uh. Well. Uh. Well. Congratulations. Thank you. I think that's in order. Um. <clears throat> did you? Uh, did it hurt? I mean, can you, like, can you see out of your other eye? Was there an infection? No, I can see. Oh, that's good. Um, okay, so. I'm so sure I met a lady in the town that we were in. Uh, cheese, <coughs> cheese, cheese or can? Um, cheese or can? Yeah. No, cheese, cheesy can. Um, cheese and can, uh, correct, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Cheese, 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 cheese is bland. Don't try to um, correct him this time. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, I, and I take up the, he says it very uh, quietly. <laughs> uh, I take out my crossbow and I'll show him the scope that was made. Oh. Uh, and a woman in Kizakan made that and she told me to come find you. Well, that's not happening. Did I leave the plans with her? Did she ask to keep those? No, you kept the plans. Okay, so I'll show him the plans as well. Sorry, hold on. My dogs are upset. And he <laughs> walks over to a door and he opens it up and he says, Hey, I love you. And he closes the door and they stop barking. Uh, oh! Uh, sorry. Wait, who's moving me? I, I moved you because I accidentally hid Hassan behind you. Um... <laughs> Getting very yeah. intimate. So, I don't know. I, you know, she told me to come here and ask for your help. Oh, uh, I'd be more than willing. You do have the plans, by the way. I'd be more than yeah. willing. This sounds like quite a quite an effort. I can imagine why she would uh, bring me in. I happen to be the inventor of... And he drew, like, really dramatically, like, he turns and he smiles at each of you. And then he opens a drawer. And you hear just, like, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack in the drawer once he, like, it stops. Once he's opened it, and he reaches in, and then he just slams uh, what looks like a glass, like pebble, onto the desk, on top of the parchment. What? What's that? Hey! Wow! Come here! Come here! Come here, come here take a look. Okay. And you look down, and you it's can see wrong. that the glass is on top of uh, like a blank space on the parchment, and he then takes. Uh, the quill and he takes just the tiniest bit of ink and you see he like gets down really close and he scribbles something 
and then he takes the glass stone and he slides it on top of the scribble, and you can say, and it says, "This is quite keen, isn't it?" And it's in tiny script, but it is now big enough for you to read. <laughs> wow. wow, that's amazing! <coughs> it made it bigger. That's right. It's about bending light. Can you see your eyes? Can you see your bones with that? My bones? Can you see your bones with that? Yeah, if you if you put it up to your skin, can you see your bones? Hmm. I haven't done that. Uh, all right. Uh, hold on. And he takes out a sheet of paper, and you can see it. Ha it is labeled with. Like, he, he opens up a sheave of paper that is also on the desk, and you can see it is filled with just these pieces of parchment that he has already written uh, each of these stages of the scientific method onto each of them. And he takes out <laughs> one of them, and he writes down, Hypothesis, you can see your bones with one of my seeing stones. <laughs> and he says, I'll get back to that later. About this eye. <laughs> yeah, my data science. So the, the stones magnify your vision. Yes. That's pretty cool. I think that's similar to the design that was used for your uh, your crossbow scope. Do you have the plans for it? Did you make yes, the plans, here. sir? No, I, I found them oh. from, in a library that oh. was going out of business, so they were giving the books away. Oh, don't you just hate that? I loved it because I got this. Oh, well, that's true. I Most of this furniture, and you look around and you can see that all of his furniture is, like, half broken. <laughs> most of this mm -hmm. I got for places that, it, that were just about to throw it out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like dropping at the Goodwill, too. I I sleep on an old fainting sofa upstairs. Um, huh. And he looks over the design and he says, It's a little rudimentary, but it's not too, it's not too different from a seeing stone. I wonder if... So aren't we able to see people's bones? Sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, I think I could... Uh, with a bit of ivory, I could, I could fasten you uh, an eyeball. And it would be a bit... would be a bit painful, but I... I've studied the human body. I... I think I might be able to... I think I could. I think I could do it. I think I could make you a new eye. Cool. I like pain. I mean, I don't like it, but you know what I mean. Well, in the <laughs> pursuit of, uh, and he lifts his his leg, which is still <laughs> you can see like it's a little wobbly when he does it. In the pursuit of of knowledge, uh, it's worth it, isn't it? Absolutely. No, it isn't. What's that? No, it isn't. And you all turn, and you can see there is a man who looks like a slightly shorter, uh, slightly thinner version of Hassan for not. He's a little younger. His hair is a little bit uh, lighter and a little less curly and a little bit more, like, wavy. Uh, and he has a, a thicker beard that is not, like, patterned in the way that Hassan's is. You shouldn't have done that. I, I'm not gonna listen to you. You shouldn't have jumped. It was dangerous. I, well, someone had to jump out, and if it hadn't been me, it could have been somebody else. And if they had died, do you know what would have happened? I know what would have happened. I would have been arrested. Is what would have happened, and that's not good. Who's gonna Who's gonna pay for you to sit here and pay and write your poems if I'm arrested? I still have my money, so I would. I want you to know if I got arrested, and he gets up and he walks over to his brother. I want you to know, if I got arrested, he takes his hand, I would still pay for you to live here. Okay. All right. And he goes back to his seat. Nope. Oh, excuse me. I mean, you have to respect a man that, that would hurt himself over others for science, right? What's your name, sir? My name is Stahim. I mean, you have to respect that, right, Steam? Uh, I mean, would you want... Do you have a brother? I uh, wait. Yes. yes, I do. I do. Oh, I saw the... <laughs> I, I, say no. I, saw, I saw the resemblance, but I didn't want to assume. Uh, 
<coughs> uh, would you would you want him to hurt himself willingly? Put himself. I don't think anything can hurt him. Uh, well, I've seen. Hassan. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. Uh, good, good. F he looks at you, Soren, and he like his face reads like I. Hey, genuinely good on you. <laughs> it's kind of his expression, <laughs> but he says, uh, "Good for you." Uh, I've seen Hassan break almost every bone in his body. And Hassan, looking down at where he is writing uh, the uh, <laughs> the thesis to his Can You See Your Skeleton <laughs> with <laughs> his stone, he says, I haven't broken all of them. I'd like to try. Uh, Have you broken any bones? Just my heart. Oh, shut up, you twit. <laughs> I've, bone. I've, broken, Not a bone. I've broken my heart. We've all broken our heart. Get over her. How many She's pieces married. did you break it into? <laughs> he says, she shattered at the end repair. Oh. I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a letter to mother and she's gonna, <laughs> You're, ve you're very annoying today, Steve. Um, I once broke my heart into right? two pieces, but to be fair, it was my last resort. <laughs> were, you, were you suffocating? No breathing. No, no breathing. I don't know <laughs> 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 Uh. All right, let's do it. Cut my eye uh, out. Oh, um, you want to take the other eye? No, <laughs> I need to be able to look at it so that I can make sure that this works. Um. <clears throat> uh, do you mind uh, if I run out to the the market? I could I could pick up the ivory and the the pewter. Oh, Do you course. need the money for it? Yes. <laughs> uh, I have a small stipend from a few uh, uh, from a few folk, but that's that's barely enough to make sure that my inventions are working. Sybil's going to reach into the satchel that the bag of holding that Sebastian is wearing and like grab out a hundred gold and say, "Hundred work." Uh, yes. Uh, it uh, all right, well, I'll go and She's just it. going to take the hundred pieces and sort of put it on the table. Sybil, you know it, it's a federal crime for you to go through people's mail like that, right? <laughs> Brian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see Hassan sort of... Courier's <laughs> Hassan uh, <laughs> scoops it into his tunic and then is like holding the tunic at the edge so that he's created a little pouch uh, the way that I carry all of my seltzer cans out to the recycling. Um, and... <laughs> I, I hope you're wearing Crocs while you do it. That just really completes the image. I will never wear Crocs. Uh, and he gets up and he says, right, well, in an hour I will perform... Uh, surgery. Stahim, do you mind making them tea? Uh, nothing that'll nothing that'll make one sleepy for our friend. Hold on. Nothing that'll make our friend sleepy for... Nothing that'll make you sleepy for our friend Sebastian. Yeah. English breakfast for me, please. I don't know enough about tea to say anything about that. Also, it would be <laughs> uh, it would be Ableton breakfast in this world. <laughs> uh, he... <laughs> He jogs away. I'll take Orange Pico. Hey, uh, do you want to hear one of the poems I wrote about the woman who broke my heart? Yes. Yes, please. I miss you. Not really. I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know of the book. Oh, tell me the part, the part about the spiders. <laughs> tell me the spider part. Abe Ab 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 comes over and looks over his shoulder and goes, There are spiders! <laughs> <laughs> if you slur your words a little bit more, I think it might be a bit catchier. 
I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> there are spiders. <laughs> Where are you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't. I'm doing tonight. Oh no, we've been, we've been claimed. We've been struck. <laughs> I'll make you all too. <laughs> but he has written the entirety of that song as yeah. his poem. Yeah, I don't know the words to it. Where, Where are you? you? Don't waste I'm your time on me. I'm, I mean, I'm all yeah, I'm already. <laughs> yeah, I'm already. Voice the voice is so my yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> Rock Band will actually get mad at you, you if you don't slur your words. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, if if Whitmer Thomas had done stand up about any of those songs, <laughs> I would have been able to sing along. But <laughs> all right, he comes Man, this back tea's down. Good. This tea's good. I'm feeling it. He comes back down with a tray of tea. There is uh, so you see they are in like painted mugs, uh, and you can see uh, how many of you are there. <laughs> there are five guests and him. Uh, so you can see that four of them are like these really beautifully painted like landscapes that curve around the mugs and they seem to be like pottery and then two of them are these really bad paintings um like one of them it is clearly meant to be some type of big cat's like face but it looks really splotchy and bad and then the other one is <coughs> two guys in ursumer clothes but they're basically stick figures <laughs> And then beneath it, one of them says Hassan, and one of them says Stahim. Oh, brother mugs. Who made that mug for who? Uh, oh, Hassan is the bad painter. <laughs> he made the <laughs> he made the brother mug, and Stahim is drinking out of that one when he gives you Good. all the <laughs> But he he gives you all your mugs. Uh, Sebastian, you get the one with the big cat. Oh God. Um, I like it. And your tea is like, it's it seems to have like ginger is the flavor. Um, the rest of you, uh, he actually seems like he's a discerning customer because Soren, you have a like sweet, you have like this chai. Yeah, I was gonna ask for chai. Uh, and then <laughs> Sybil, Do you look up teas? I know that. No, I, I drink. I drink chai tea. No, no, no. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm asking me. No, I know that. Like chai is chai is the only kind of tea that sounds appealing to me, outside of sweet tea. They're all good. I I had enough time. Well, like actual enough... actual tea, herbal teas can kiss my ass for the I, most part. Some of them are okay. I but... had a, I had enough time in England of politely accepting offers of tea. I don't need to have water that's been ruined. Uh, I'll put some dirt in hot water. Ugh. Ted, how do you take your tea? <laughs> Usually back to the counter because it's, it's kind of a horrible mistake. Uh, you all uh, have your tea. And Abael is uh, kind of just reading some of the stuff that's on the ground. Thanks for the dirt water. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. But... <laughs> I'm aware that tons of people love tea, and so I have to occasionally <laughs> write people who love tea. <laughs> um, you know what Sybil's gonna do? She's gonna, <laughs> Sybil's just gonna like, she's kind of slumped over in a chair, and then she, when he stops and he's like finished a poem, she's gonna pop up and say, Can I read you something? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she's going to begin. Uh, reciting <laughs> Meet the man who chopped a thousand trees over his golden ass <laughs> to him. Oh, uh, not uh, sing it, it just was, straight up say it. Uh, so it was, it was Abael reading poems that he found around. Oh, it's Abael. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought it was. No, but Stahim, Stahim is perfectly willing to listen to your art. And when you're done, he says, Do you mind, uh, I think um, it's a it's very good. I think it would work a little bit better as a song than as a poem. <laughs> I 
I hope you don't take offense. I didn't mean. Simple whips out her flute. <laughs> Uh, if you if you play it, he nods his head back and forth, and in a super deep voice, he's like, "Meet the man who chopped a thousand trees down <laughs> with his golden axe." <laughs> and he does it all perfectly from memory from you reciting it. He does all of the lyrics. <laughs> Abayil is taken, and he goes, "That song is familiar to me." <laughs> Before you might I have heard it as a dog. Yeah, before I was adopted by the boy, by the little girl in the caravan, I, I heard that. Huh. Is that a popular tune? Is that has that taken up? I wrote it. <laughs> uh, well, it seemed to get those people up in a frenzy. That's when I got lost. <laughs> hey, it's about this guy right here. He's, he had a golden axe. He chopped down a thousand trees. All right, well. Congratulations on your on your feat of, of tree chopping, Sebastian. I'm a legend. With a golden axe, too. That's hard. It's a soft metal, you know. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like I need to write a new ballad for you. Because you did kill a dragon. Ah. <laughs> I, like that, that, I like that that's what he's known for more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> his greatest accomplishment. Ah. Well, uh, I'm back. And you see he is back, and he has a pouch in one hand, and in the other hand he has a half-eaten bit of, like, uh, sweet bread. Mm. All right. What you got there? Sweet bread? Uh, yes, cinnamon. Yum. Would you like some? I'll have a nibble. All right. And he hands it I'd, I'd over take a to little. you, and he says, please uh, tear it off. Tear it off. Tear it off. That's how this is how I talk. Hey. <laughs> Toots. <laughs> True. Dick Tracy villain. Okay. Oh. Hey. A real choo choo Charlie. Let me fix you. <laughs> oh no, he can't he can't start talking like Dennis Miller. <laughs> hey babe. You guys are saying babe. I'm gonna fix your eye, babe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, I hate this. You can, never mind. I'm out. I don't need an eye. <laughs> Take my ears. I think, um. I think it's probably very apparent that I haven't gotten to a DM in slightly longer than usual. And so I'm very... <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, this is great. We love it. All right. Uh, so you, you can each tear off a piece of the, of the sweet cinnamon bread. There are, there are, uh, it could be evenly I'm going to have to say, six pieces. when it gets around to me, I'm probably going to eat it all. All right, so Sebastian gets a piece. Soren, do you take a piece? <laughs> I take a piece. All right. Uh, what am I saying? The only characters who have anything to do with food are Zakar, Stevia, and Soren. And I know that Soren <laughs> has a sweet tooth. Um, <laughs> Well, oh wait, Sebastian's vegan, so there are four people who have things that I know about their their dietary taste. Um, and then Stevia just goes. Well, oh, it only drink pure water. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Never mind, straight edge. Uh, uh, Sybil, you see Stevia take it, and before you can uh, hold your hand out to take a take a piece, she has eaten it. Yeah, I can't do it without realizing that it's what I've done. And then seeing your hand out, I'll like kind of shrug apologetically. <laughs> Simple face looks heartbroken. I, I had uh, no <laughs> I had noticed the like chain that it was going in and I only ate half of mine and I'm gonna mage hand my half over to her. <laughs> ah, right. I will be right back down. Uh do you all mind and he steps out and he says, Do you all mind um moving off of this carpet? Uh, no. Okay. Yes, sir. And he goes up, and after about a minute, you hear, It's about to come down! And the ceiling above you opens up, just sort of slides, <laughs> and then you can see that there is a platform lowering just in the uh, outline of this carpet. And he goes, Shit! Uh, <laughs> Get the get the poem in the middle. Stay. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Runs out and picks up a piece of paper and moves on. 
Um, and then you see he he lowers down next to a like tall cot, and then there is a small table fastened to this this platform. Uh, and you can see that it is carved so that there is a opening around the shape of the spiral staircase. Um, and it lowers down on these. It's it lowers on these big chains. And when you look up, you can see that there, this is like a four-story tower, and it go the chains go through the rest of the floors by the looks of it. So it's likely that he has this trapdoor sliding platform going through. So it's, like a, it's like a huge dumbwaiter. Basically, yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Sebastian, if you don't mind. Coming and uh, sitting on the... Sitting on this. Would you like to be unconscious or conscious? Conscious, please. Okay. Uh, hmm. And he looks between everybody in the room. Uh, his very thin brother, the very thin <laughs> half-elf, and uh, Sybil. And then he goes, uh, you two. And he points at Stevie and Soren. I'm hoping that it doesn't come into play, but just in case, would you all mind uh, holding your friend down? Yeah. All right. Now, Sebastian, I'm mm. going to have to cut an eye in your eye, so a hole in your eye socket. Okay. <laughs> so, because of that, I was wondering, do you imbibe spirits? Uh, what kind of spirits you got? Um, well, my brother and I, you know, uh, our faith forbids uh, drinking. So, I don't have anything for drinking. I have disinfected, and I'm going to be using some of that on your face. But I thought it is quite potent. I thought you might like to drink it. Um, no, Sybil's just like doing like a no hand gesture. Nah, I'm not really into that. And I'm going to take out um, this, two of the orchids that are in my bag and I'm just going to eat them. I'm good. Blah, I'm good. He watches you eat them and then he just goes, fascinating. And then he just shoves you down onto the bed and brings a strap over your chest. Uh, and as I'm eating the orchids and being pushed down, I'm just going to be like, try to make the pupils smaller than they are at this very moment. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Like, what instrument does Soren have again? Uh, Soren has a lyre. Okay. Do you mind if Sybil borrows it? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Sybil's gonna borrow Soren's lyre, and she's gonna start playing old uh, lullaby music that their mom, Abriella, used to uh, sing to them. You can also borrow my acoustic guitar of Wonderwall if you want. I'm good. When then you feel a moving pain, know that it is a mother's rain that falls on soil ever to toil to grow beneath a fire's boil. But you will rise as if the spring ever with many songs to sing, says Stahi. That one was good. I liked that one. And then Hassan <laughs> takes a uh, scalpel next to him, and with bardic inspiration from his brother, is going to make the first incision. And you are uh, luckily it's like Aaron Sorkin writing a speech. Oh no! How dare you! Sorry. How dare you! <laughs> it's, an, it's an Aaron Sorkin speech in an Aaron Sorkin show, and everyone telling him how good it was inside the show. All right, let's we'll all walk around the room and <laughs> talk. You lose three levels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's worth it. All right. Uh, so over ten minutes 
Uh, Sebastian, you take a total of 15 damage. Child's play. <laughs> I thought for his, do you want to half it? <laughs> it's a game. Uncanny yes, dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Oh no, you've ruined oh. the sur surgery. I cut your medulla oblongata. <laughs> Got it. I took the damage. All right. Um, and then he continues to work. Um, you all can see, like, Sebastian has a good amount of blood on his face. Um, Hassan starts to... He takes that alcohol and he gets it onto his rag. Um, Sebastian, can you make a constitution saving throw? Yeah. Right. 11. Uh, you are taking it, you are gritting your teeth and letting out exhalations of pain, uh, but you are still conscious. Um, as I'm performing these lullabies, can I be giving him bardic, at least one bardic inspiration? Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, and he continues to work. Um, you all notice, I'm not going to describe this because I feel like this is probably... Uh, super gross, but basically he. Uh, never mind. I'm just gonna say that he he has <laughs> the opening and hey. the elements of the so, eye that actually allow you to see past the that aren't the eyeball are in play, <laughs> um, and you see that he before, on his walk here he seemed to have carved something into this um, pearl that he has. Or his ivory, I think I said. Um, and you see that he has set a pewter pupil into it. And then you watch as he takes a seeing stone, one of his invention, and puts it in. But you notice that this seeing stone seems special. Um, it's different from all the ones that are in that still open drawer. Mm. He slides it in, and then he says, all right. And... Uh, you will take 23 points of damage. Okay. Uh, and so then he tells you, please uh, hold your eyes closed. I do it. All right. Now, open your good eye. Okay. Now... Okay. Oh, wow. Sebastian, once again, you see. Wow. And it's like. Can you see my bones? Can you? Yes. You can! See your bones. Well, alright, we'll need controls, but that's good to know. <laughs> Tell me, uh. Sebastian, how many how many yeah. fingers am I holding up? And he holds his hands far away from you, but still standing right next to you. Make a perception oh. check. <laughs> the DC <laughs> to see how many fingers he has up is three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you see that he has three fingers up. And he says, very well. Um, now, and he goes... I over. say four. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, four. Fuck. Uh, and he goes over behind his stairwell and he holds out his hand for a second. And he says, how many now? And he holds it out for a second again, but then flashes it back in. And he keeps doing that. Uh, can you make a perception check? Nine. Okay. Plus a D8. Oh, it's a D10 now. <laughs> it's a D10 now. 16. Okay. Uh, you still can't quite make out what they are. Mm. Try pressing. You lost your right eye. Try pressing your right temple. Oh, like Magneto? Okay, I do it. Uh, when you <laughs> do, Cyclops rules. When you do, you see as he moves his hand, he is holding uh, four fingers up. And mm -hmm. part of why you can see that is you can see slightly further no you can see like thermal a little bit 
What? You can uh, see his bones. See their bones. So you you now, can see his bones. <laughs> you, uh, you, you now ignore. Uh, so yes, you can see further. Um, you will do your DC for perception check is a little bit lower. It's going to do with sights. Uh, you can see further, and uh, when you choose to do it, you can see. You can basically ignore uh, cover. Okay. Wall hacks. And he is holding out four fingers. And so you, you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Bone side. <laughs> well. Uh, wow, this is amazing. Thank you. No problem. I, I think I might be able to improve it even further. But uh, I'll, it'll need some. It'll take some time, and I'll need other other things to use. What do you need? That's not my voice. This is my voice. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's uh, there's talk of a a meteor falling somewhere north, a ways outside of the city. Uh, what I could do with that, I don't know. Do you want us to go get a meteor for you? I would. Sebastian, nothing would delight me more. Done. Sold. You have to fight a white-haired man with a real long sword to stop it. Yeah. Talk about Elric of Anibide? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sephiroth. Oh, Sephiroth. No. <laughs> Look. Well, I guess they're about the same amount of emo. I was going to say it's not quite emo enough to be Elric. <laughs> Stormbringer's not that long. <laughs> <laughs> Just a normal sword. Well, <laughs> I do hope you all come back. Yeah. I've got a we got to cast now. Holy. Hmm? We got to cast Holy to stop the meteor. Hmm? <laughs> he wouldn't know. He hasn't read the book. Summon a character <coughs> whose name will never be said by the dungeon master, even because he exists in normal D and D. Good, good idea. Uh, well, I give him another two hundred gold. Oh no! To, to I... fund experiments and things like that. Oh well, okay. <laughs> Thanks. You go with that. Yeah, I'm more than happy. I, I, we... I have an idea. Tail feathers. What if I could land like a bird does? You think the tail feather? Oh, and I'll uh, I'll poof out my raven and like let him watch it fly around and land and dance around. Also, tail feathers will make you dance. Really? They shake your tail feathers. Tail feathers will make you dance. Tail feathers will make you. Dance. I'm I'm a very <laughs> poor dancer, so I would love I'd love an improvement. Uh, um, we did have an. I, I did have to ask you another question. I need a favor of you, maybe. All right. Um, or maybe Sybil would be better to explain this one or Soren. Um, but there was some issues with the flow of water outside of town. Oh no! Did something happen to my machine? Well, what is your machine? It's uh. Well, it's a. It's a cleanser. It it filters out purifier. it filters out silt and, and waste from the room. Okay. Yeah, um, cool. so just, it could be clogged or anything. Well, it, you said that there's an issue with the water. I, I've I've kept the water and all of our sources of irrigation from it. I've I've been working to make sure that it's as clean as possible. If if there's an issue, that means that one of my machines must not be working, or I, I might have miscalculated. And... All I have in my notes is that it has an irrigation problem. <laughs> uh, so your characters would remember that there is a grotto downstream that is not... Uh, there's a type of mineral that used to be carried by the water to the fish in the grotto that is no longer being taken there. And the fish are dying out. It seems. And this is the only space in the world where these fish exist. It seems like uh, 
one of your machines may be upsetting the natural balance of things a little bit. It's uh, too right. good at its job. Filtering out a, a mineral these these fish need to live that they're the only ones around that we know of. Oh. And are these fish could they be moved, maybe? Do you think? Possibly. Um I don't know. Uh, do you think it would be possible to it. reroute what's being filtered downstream so that once it's clear of the actual city, uh, all of the minerals, all of the silt in the water can just be reprocessed back into the river at a point outside of the city? Perhaps you can move it downstream of the grotto. I could give it a shot, but the system we've set up takes water to all of Ursumer. Uh, this is going to make it difficult to... I can... I can think about it. I can, I can try to think of a way to fix it. Uh, do you know how many fish are still there? How long they could make it? Because if we could just... If we could just keep water flowing into the city during the war... Do we know that? Is there a way to maybe divide the river so that we can keep an ecosystem on one side and this purification system on the other? Well, if the mineral is, I mean, if it's the minerals being fed, it's got to be coming from a source upstream. So maybe if we could find the source, we can move enough of it to directly to the fish. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, that seems like magic. Well, doesn't seem like magic. Uh, so that was, that was out of character, I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was trying to think it through of the, situ the ecological situation in play here. If it's a mineral, it would have to be some sort of like tangible like stone or metal or, you know, mineral. I don't know if we can move enough of it to sustain an ecosystem of fish, though. Yeah. I, I'm a... I like researching animals. I, I enjoy them. I don't want to be the cause of their death, but... I'll... No, we don't think that that is... was what your intention was at all. Unforeseen side effect. Yeah. I could, um, I don't know. I... Maybe we could divert the river, but that... <sighs> Council already took everything, every bit of... took every favor that I had just to let them... Get them to let me set up the first station. I think changing something that could give me... If they knew it was me, they would... Uh, how, did, how did they do things before your machines? I, there were a few... There was... When the water was brought beneath the cities, we, ha we have sewers and we've had them for some time. But, uh, it, it did clean them. It just, I, I've found a way, I think, to clean it often enough that you can drink from nearly every point of the river. And uh, I, I also, while I was doing it, I, I diverted the water flow to a few villages who haven't had any irrigation projects since, you know, last time that something was done of this, of this magnitude. That they had no issue with, of course, but for fish in times of war, I don't know if... Is it strong enough to filter out the flavor of a bunch of dead fish? Probably not. I mean, I understand that wartime, you know, not everything's going to be the most ideal, but I'd say a, a city population drinking 
dead fish water for an extended period of time is bound to have an impact on morale. I think that you're right. Uh, I, I'd love there to be a solution, but if the choice is the fish or my country, I will cho I will choose people. I just don't want to. I I would rather we we not go there first. I would rather we try to find a way to solve it so that the fish can live. And Do we know what mineral it is? Uh, you all do not know. Phoebe was ah. unfortunately <laughs> vague on that point. If we find out what mineral it is, maybe we could try to use our knowledge or knowledge in the city. Maybe try to find somewhere nearby that has a similar amount of that mineral. The city's made of sandstone, right? Mostly. I don't, I mean, that does nothing. I'm just, <laughs> I don't know anything about the, the properties of sandstone other than that it's kind of weak. I take out the book of the fish people. <laughs> Are there answers in it? No. Damn it. When will this book come up? Do we know what point in the in the river where these fish uh, live? Yes, they are uh, seven miles past you <clears throat> east along the river. And what? Where's the like? How many filters has it passed through at that point? By that point, from the city, uh, there will have been just one. Like you will pass if you traveled. Like by the river. Next oh, to it. I mean, I mean, from the outside in, like, because uh, if it's flowing it flows downstream, to the it would be. Or it flows to the ocean. It's a fantasy river, and I don't understand anything about how. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, it's nope. Too, hey, I'm probably listen. getting too specific. Nope. <laughs> Every time I look at my map, I think. There's got to be 18 things wrong with you, huh? Uh, <laughs> but it flows to the ocean, which I do believe the Nile does. So <laughs> that's... Oh, every, every, every river does. Oh, okay, eventually. cool. Hell yeah. It, man. <laughs> but uh, my, I guess my question is, how, how many filters past the nat natural state does it pass through before it reaches these fish, okay. this fish area? gotcha. Uh, there will be, uh, Hassan just pulls out the map, and you can see that there are a total of these nine stations. Um, and the stations, he explains that they are built, uh, so that there is essentially a, uh, like, there is next to each of the actual filter points, there is a intentionally left empty, uh, like spot with gates that's basically like a canal so that part is flooded the, a ship is able to pass through that part and go around the filter station and mm -hmm. then the doors are shut the water dries out goes into the ground and uh basically so every time a ship goes through a little bit of less clean water goes with it uh but it'll be cleaned out at the next station that's kind of the idea so Me there too. are nine stations the station before the grotto is the sixth Okay, so it gets filtered. Essentially, gets filtered three times, or two, yeah, two times before it reaches the fish, or three times. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know if this even matters uh, ultimately, but I want to know how how many degrees away from just regular full-on river water, unfiltered, Six. are these fish? There are six degrees away. Okay. So there are a total of nine stations between source of the river and the ocean. Uh -huh. The one that is to the east of Operon before you get to the grotto, that's number six. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty filtered out by that point. It would take a lot to 
make it like pure, unfiltered water to them. <clears throat> Can we find out from the boss lady what stone we're looking for? Do we have a way to communicate with her? I believe that you do. Hmm. I thought that you got an item that lets you do that. If you don't, uh, maybe you did. I don't remember getting something like that. Yeah, yeah I don't, don't have anything like that in my notes. Mm, well, I'll decide before our next session that maybe, <laughs> maybe you did. <laughs> um, Can we... Would it make sense to ask Asnala if she knows? I mean, I could I could make a uh, say a prayer and uh, see if she's if she's got time. I don't know how connected she is with things in this part of the world, though. That's true. I mean, she is a goddess of rebirth, so maybe she could help us with coming up with ideas for the fish. Dear is Nala, it's me, Stevia. Are you free to talk right now? Yeah. Well, me and the rest of Thorns got a got a bit of an issue. You're on you're on speaker, by the way, just to let you know. Uh, trying to figure out a way to save these fish She's without. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Um, have you thought about... Could they... Can't you just move the water? So that wherever there is this, this stuff that they need, it can pass around the filters and get to them? Well... I mean, I think didn't we suggested that, didn't we? Isn't that isn't that irri irrigation? Uh, you suggested that, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that was uh, that was one of the things that we we talked about. But thank you for your help, though. Your your friend Stevia. Oh, okay, love you. Love you too, baby. Did you just call our god baby? Oh, well, what? Are y'all dating? I mean, it felt right. No, 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 we're not dating. It's just, we're like family. I guess she does, like, appear younger than both of us. <laughs> Well, so we got diverting the river. And then I kind of just like put my hand so uh, uh, Hassan can't see it. Like, we got busting through six filters. And um, we got potentially figuring out what this mineral is and trying to introduce it directly into the environment. I'm thinking making a new body of water might be our best choice. Yeah. You want to build an aquarium? Yes. That is exactly what we're going to do. I think it sounds cool. An aquarium? <clears throat> I would have a place for all the, all the seeing stones I messed up with and made blue. What, what's that about making it blue? I a lot of my seeing stones I accidentally made blue, and I just thought they would look nice in the bottom of a, an aquarium. Yeah, you know what else yeah. would look cool? A guy in like a diving suit, um, and like the <laughs> wires going up, but they're like a, like a fake ship. Yeah, like a wreck, or maybe 
Maybe like a, a treasure chest that opens yeah. with a bubble every now and again. <laughs> yeah. Why is the treasure chest breathing? Could you be put a real gold in it, but you don't tell everyone. You make them think it's fake gold. These are all wonderful ideas. Uh, do you all want to call the session there? <laughs> <Did> you all... <laughs> yeah. I think we got another hour yeah. here. Um... <laughs> Did you all designing the aquarium from finding <laughs> All right, well, we will uh, be back next week with the adventures of Team One in a city in Ursumer. What city is that? Oh, it's Operon. <laughs> yeah. uh, Wait, that's where we are? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Um, <laughs> what part? Wait. Were you Operon with the us, too? No, you all, you all came through the, uh, the southern gate. Ah. You all just don't recall that because I was like, here's the southern gate. And you all said, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We bypassed your golem fight. And now. <laughs> I made the connection through the golems. So I was like, oh, that's the same city. Uh, but you all have. Uh, yeah, you're in the same city. Uh, so we'll be back with team one <laughs> next week at six o'clock on Monday. Uh, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Thank you all for playing. Love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> hey, love you, baby.